Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this wonderful Monday morning um, to Sewing Street. My name is Rebecca Reed. Um, be gentle with me. This is only my fourth show on Sewing Street, but oh, have I loved it. It's great. Um, we've got so much coming up for you today you're going to love. If you love embroidery, which I do, or I've always quite fancied having a go, and you've heard of Shashko, but not really sure what it is, then you are in for a treat this morning. We have got Susan Briscoe on for two hours, who is the queen of Shashko. And, you know, at the moment, we're all sort of in a kind of a semi-lockdown. We're at home a lot. And this is the time for, well, getting out your sewing machine and doing lots of whizzy patchwork. But it's also a time for a bit of slow stitching. And Shashko really is slow stitching. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you too much about it because Susan knows everything and will tell you everything. So we've got a few things for you before that. So I'm going to start off really excited this morning to find out what the early bird is. I'm always saying to them here um, about these erasable pens. If you've seen any of my shows before, I'm always saying, now you could use an erasable pen. These are just brilliant. They are brilliant. So we have got a pack of four and you get a red one a green one a black one and a blue one um, and you save three pounds so our price today is 11 pound 96 so because the pmp is 2.95 for all day then your saving on these four pens is three pounds so that's kind of your pmp done because if you're new to sewing street um the way that we work is you have one set of post pmp that's it that's it for the whole day you just pay one lot and you can keep popping things in and out of your basket all day long and you only get charged that 2.95 so with this three pound saving that's your pmp covered now if you've not used these before these are fantastic they um the, they're called pilot friction pens and they're made with a thermosensitive ink which means that when you draw with them i'm going to show you here you can write whatever you want, swirls and things. Now you can draw them, peep, a lot um, a lot of, that's a swirl. A lot of classroom teachers use these because um, they're erasable. You see these little white rubbery things on the end? When you rub them, the friction erases them. So they're really good for kids who, you know, want, who make mistakes and want to keep rubbing out. That's not what we use them for. As sewers, we use them as heat erasable. So you can draw lots of lines like this. And then all you do is get an iron and you press them. And look at that. Amazing. Amazing. And if you're using, which I discovered recently, if you're using a fabric that's slightly delicate and you don't want to press it, or maybe you've done some embroidery and you don't want to press it, you can just run over it with a hairdryer. Just any heat and it'll go. Um, what's great about them as well is or well, or maybe not great, is um, once they get down to minus 12 degrees, then the colour will come back again. So I've heard about people who've been on the plane and they've got, you know, some, some work with them, some sewing. Maybe they're going to a quilt exhibition and they get off the plane and because it's so cold in the hold, all the <laughs> ink has come back again. But luckily, it doesn't often go down to minus 12. But if you ever ink them and you want it to come back just pop them in the freezer and the color will go back but what i use them for i use them a lot for embroidery so if i want to trace a design i just put some fabric i mean you can see from my board here if you just put this is a cream cotton fabric you can normally see through designs or you can use a light box and you can just trace over it then do not press it which i've done before i moved it you can um you can then stitch all over it. You can use different colours for different parts. And because this pack of four gives you all the four, see, I'm just tracing over this lovely mat. And then when you've finished all the embroidery, you iron it off. The other thing that I use them for a lot is I use them for marking fabric when I'm doing seam allowances and things. And you know when you've got to mark that point with a pin or you want to put your one centimetre seam allowance or sometimes, you know, particularly if you're new to machine sewing and you think, oh God, I'm really, the one thing that I hate about machine sewing is sewing in a straight line. Draw your seam allowances on first. Um, you can use, um, use a ruler draw this sort of quarter of an inch seam allowance or the one and a half centimeter whatever you're using and then when you've finished you can just press it i mean obviously be careful because if you get press it it does disappear and i have done it before where i have traced a whole embroidery design and then thought well, i'll just press that fabric to make it nice straight and it will go but i mean i would say with any 
marker pens always test them first on a fabric just in case but i have to say i do use these all the time and they don't they don't come back but obviously you might have a fabric that has a particular finish or it might be an old one or a new one so just test it on a corner first um just to be sure but from in the pack you will get a black one a blue one a green one and a red one and the reason for that is you'll need different colors to show up on different fabrics so if you've got a red fabric obviously the red one isn't going to show up that well now i've they do last quite a long time actually because i've had mine for a while these the friction pens come in two different thicknesses this is the medium thickness so the actual nib is 0.7 millimeter thick but you will get a 0.35 millimeter line which is it's the right width it's the right width for sewing so if you were going to do some very fine marking it would be a bit thick but because this is for sewing this is for embroidering over this is marking seam allowances um you know if you're doing pleating and you want to draw mark the pleats you know you people often say pin the pleats tack the pleats tack the lines you don't need to you can draw on it with these um even you know in patchwork if say you've got to have a placement of something maybe you're doing some applique and you want to just draw the placement rather than using chalk pens all sorts of things these are of all the things in my sewing kit other than my sewing machine clearly these are my favorite things and anyway three pound off today which is five pence more than your postage so i would um if you've not used them before, get them. And if you have got them, then another four are always useful. They do last quite a long time. You'll find, you know, when they start running out, you just move on to another colour and then buy another pack. But they are brilliant. And you depends what you want to use them for. I'm going to write my whole name. I could spend ages colouring. Look at that, look at that. It's look at that. just amazing. It's just gone. It's gone. But it'd be really interesting to put this in the freezer, wouldn't it? And see all the funny the marks I've... We'll put it in the freezer and give it a go. I don't know how long it how long it takes for it to go. So uh, minus twelve, and it'll come back again. Um, but you know, also do remember they are really good for children if they're learning handwriting and they want to keep um, just erasing. They they obviously won't be using nine, but the the tip because the way that it works, it's the friction which doesn't need very much by rubbing it that creates just enough heat to get rid of it. So. Um, but you can use them to write with and they will only disappear with heat. So I, somebody said that they'd written a letter and they'd taken it to the post office, but they put it on the dashboard of their car and it was obviously really hot in the car and the address disappeared. So that's the only thing you, that you need to be careful of. But I mean, for us, we'll use them for sewing. Anyway, pop them in your basket. Really popular. So um, just remember, 1 p.m. P all day. We've got loads in the show today. So start off with these and that covers your pmp and you're done um now i'm very excited for our next product our next product um this is the fat quarter bag now we had these in stock twenty oh gosh only twice before they've been massively massively popular they've sold out so we've been waiting and waiting to get some more and finally we've got them um so on today let me give you a quick recap tell you what is on today's show so at 8 a.m we've got the launch of the playful pre-cuts book which is a brilliant book we'll talk about that in more in detail um nine o'clock susan briscoe with her shashko panels you are going to love this 10 o'clock, we've got fabulous fabrics, lots of new fabrics, some old favourites, lots and lots to talk about if you need some more fabrics. 11 o'clock, Susan Briscoe is back with more Shashko, so if you love it at 9 o'clock, you'll learn even more then. And at 12, more fabrics again. So, let's get into the fabulous fat quarters pack now the obviously the idea behind this bag is it's for storing fat quarters you can get 198 fat quarters here now i haven't actually tried that so i am just going to believe them on that but it's just a brilliant storage bag you could use it for all sorts of things whether it's fabric or fat quarters anything so it's got a zip that's what i like about this the zip goes all the way down so that when you want to store things in it you can 
pull that out of the way and it's easy to get the stuff in. It's um, made from a waterproof polyester outside. It's also got pockets on the inside and it's got dividers so that you can look, look and you can take them out. See, if you don't want the dividers, you can take them out. Or if you only want one divider but not two, depending on what you're going to store them. You don't have to store fat quarters in here. You could use them. You could use it as your weekend away bag. You could put all sorts of different things. You could use it for putting, you know, storing a few things under the bed because it's nice and flat. Be brilliant for storing toys in. It's got a clear PVC lid with the zip and it's got two carry handles. So you can get, if you wanted to start, let's get a few of these. These are the fat quarters that are coming up. I'm not gonna get them all in, but look how nicely they fit inside. And say you were going to pile them up. I'll have to get them all out again. But you know, I think it's, as um, sewers, we're in a bit fabric obsessed, aren't we? Well, I am anyway always collecting fabric not really sure where to store it all but this is ideal because you can get so much in it and because it stores flat you could buy more than one zip them up and then stack them all up use different colorways in each one make a brilliant gift for somebody say you've got a friend who loves sewing say you've got a friend who would like to love sewing and doesn't yet this would be great to put some fabric in the middle you could buy them some notions like you know buy them a pair of scissors some pins some needles all the sort of accessories and haberdashery they need and that you know you could start collecting things would make a lovely gift for them but they were massively popular last time we had them but 10.99 10 10.99 that's really that's that's very very good value isn't it anyway they are flying out which we knew they would which we've been trying to get them back in stock so if you want one of these bags then please do pop it in your basket so look then you've got the carry handle and then it stores and i, I think it's such a great idea that it's see-through on the top because you know what it's like we put all this stuff in bags and you think oh what is in there and then it takes us ages and something that you know often is a bit daunting when you have quite a few products in your stash is you think oh i've got to take ages and ages to search through this but also you know when you don't when it's not in use you can store it flat say you're going to a workshop you could um you know put everything you need for that one that one workshop in the bag you could take out one of the dividers so say you wanted to put your these are <laughs> as you can see very strong velcro um see very strong velcro but actually they so you could put everything you need for your one workshop in the back zip it up and there we go ready to go and it's got that really nice long zip um oh sorry they've sold out they've sold out right i'll um put that down there then so that's gone gone if you manage to get yours, congratulations. So just remember, when we say they're new in stock and it's limited, then we do actually mean it. Because I know sometimes people say, oh, they're flying out and they're not actually telling the truth, but I was, because they have. They're flying out and they've flown. Right. So we've got Susan on in 45 minutes time doing Sashko. So if... You're concerned about getting the Sashko because, again, every time we have Susan on, this is only the second time she was on Sewing Street when we first launched, I think back in February, so quite a while ago. When Alan, she is massively popular. She is so engaging and so knowledgeable. This is a quilt that she's made. So if you don't know what Sashko is, look at that. I mean, how beautiful is that? It's just a... And then there's one another image coming up here. This is a smaller one where you've got the little Shashko box around the edge. Now we're selling the panels, not to make the centre bit, that's just a fabric, but we're um, selling the panels to do the Shashko around the edge. So we've got lots of panels and supplies. So we've got needles, we've got bundles of thread, we've got panels. So if you want to get any of those in advance of the of her coming on at nine o'clock, have a look at the website and get it in your basket because when she comes on air and she starts talking, 
her stuff does tend to go very, you know, rather quickly. And we've only got what we could get. So, anyway, anyway, before that, before that, excitingly, we have got a brand new book. I'm going to put my glasses on for this. It's a lovely book. It's called Playful Pre-Cut Quilts by Amanda Neerhauser. Amanda is a prolific quilter. She's written a couple of books. She lives in Southern California. Um, really, she has a really lovely website and blog if you want to read more all about her. And all the information of that is in her book. Um, and I had to look at her blog and it's really nice. Lots of really interesting information and detail all about her and her background. This is a great book. It's been done in a really good way that all of the quilts use pre-cuts. So pre-cuts basically, if you don't know what those are, is fabric where it's been cut into a specific size. So there are different sorts of pre-cuts. You can get charm packs which are five inch squares. You can get, well they have different names depending on the company who makes them. We call them layer cakes which are ten inch squares. You can get jelly rolls which are also called design rolls and they are two and a half inch strips. Anyway, all of these books use pre-cuts because quite often we buy pre-cuts, we buy fat quarters, we buy layer cakes, and then we think, well, what are we going to do with them all? So all the quilts in this book use um, a standard 12-inch block, which is pretty much the most common quilt block size. And she shows you how to make all of these blocks. But using any of these blocks, you can mix and match whichever you want, because obviously because they're all the same size, you can make 15 different quilts. So should we just have a little a little look through that there's Amanda and her family she, but she has um, <laughs> she has a really really nice blog and website which is worth looking at so um, she tells you what a pre-cut is if you don't know so this is really good for beginners who don't know you know there's your five inch charm packs that's what a jelly roll design roll looks like there's your layer cakes, fat eights, fat quarters. So anything that's cut in advance. Um, bit of information about the basics, finishing, bastering, layering, binding. She also shows you really good, in, you know, a very simple diagram, but quite effective of how to join the binding on a mitre on your quilt. And that's something I know a lot of people struggle with. It took me ages to work out the first time I did it. Once you've cracked it, it's quite simple. But there's just, you know, that's just a nice little touch and you can tell when someone's a real quilter that they know that that's important. Then we move into the project. So all of the, you can choose which blocks you put in the projects. So in, in this one, this lovely garden cat quilt, she says you need three packs of five inch pre-cut squares. So that's great. So you think, oh, well, that's good because I've already got a couple of charm packs. So I just need three packs of those. So very nicely written and nicely laid out. There's lots of really clear diagrams and instructions. Nice layout diagrams because I always think when you're creating a quilt, it's really nice to be able to see how the whole quilt is joined together because you see the finished picture, but it's when you're creating the blocks. So she shows you how to make the projects. I love this one, Rise and Shine. What a beautiful quilt. Um, again, with your the layout, vintage treasures that's all got the stars. That's really lovely. Um, hearts. God, there really is it's lots, lots and lots going on in here. I love this one. Is that that's the one that's on the cover, Sunday Drive? Really nice. And what's the next one? Gingham patches. It's beautifully photographed, is it? It's very visual. I mean, they and she's really thought it through. And there's quite a mixture of, you know, the first one I showed you used charm packs. This one uses fat eighths and it uses jelly rolls so it uses a mixture of different products i mean obviously if you haven't got pre-cuts if you're using fabric that you've bought by the meter or the half meter that's fine because you can just cut it into those sizes you don't have to use pre-cuts but it's a really nice way if you're starting out in quilting and you think oh well i'll just buy a few little pieces of fabric this is a really good book for beginners however it's also a really good inspiration book so if you've done if you are a quilt you've done quilting before but you want you know some really nice simple ideas 
that just add a little bit of a twist. I mean, this one, the colonial flowers, when you look at the photograph here, it looks... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so strange. So I'm just laughing because Neil's just stood behind the camera and made, made faces at me just, just to throw me a bit. So the colonial flowers quilt is gr it's just really pretty, isn't it? It looks like almost like carnation, it's got sort of spiky edges to it. But once you break it down, you make the very simple quilt block. It starts off with half square triangles and then you join those together with whole squares with a square in the middle and you can see how simple that is. When you then put all of the blocks together and you know, you've got these little um, nine patch squares, you think, well, how do you make those? But it's really, really simple. You put, you join a light and a dark and a light strip together. You then cut them the other way. Then you join them back together and you've got a nine patch. So it's written in a way that's really broken down. And then when you look at the diagram, that's really simple. Um, there is a whole sort of skill set level in here. You have got a quite a mixture between complex quilts, simple quilts, but all using these blocks and the pre-cut squares love this one, the flower basket block. That's so simple, but really effective. I like the way the fabrics that she's cho chosen to this for this one as well, because they're very pretty. This one, Summer Picnic. It's, um, I guess it's an American book, so isn't it the whole sort of summer picnic, red, white and blue? I mean, obviously you can do it in, in any colours, but that's really fresh. It makes you think of the sea and going to the beach with that lovely pop of red in it as well leaf peeping this is really not this is kind of we're more moving into autumnal quilts into the american fall but they've done it in really really bright colors it's not just um you'd think all of these maple leaves would be doing oranges and browns but she's put pops of yellow and lime green and turquoise and blue in it as well and then mixed in all sort of prints so that you can really use up your stash in this one you've got spots ginghams squares, floral, all sorts. Really, really lovely book. A nice farmhouse quilt. And then I think I just saw here, I like this one. This is just one block and this is a wall hanging. Because you don't always want to make a big quilt. It doesn't have to be a wall hanging. It could be um, a lap quilt as well. But it's lovely that you could use any of the blocks in this book to just make something smaller. And you can do it and then she gives you um different blocks that you could use in the center so with this like with this one she's got the star block in the center so what you do is you with this wall hanging let me just turn over onto that page um is you can put any block you want in the center and then she just shows you a way of edging it so if you want a heart in it you turn back to the heart block but if you want a cat in the center you just put the cat in the center of the block um and then she says this one, oh, three blocks. So you can just join three blocks in a row and you make a table runner. So you could use one block and repeat it enough times to go over your table. Wouldn't matter how, how long you just measure your table and do it that length. Or you could really practice and you could use, I don't know, say your six favorite blocks from the book. If you're using the same fabrics or the same fabric collection, you know that they'll all go together. Um, then again, a four block quilt. So this is very versatile. You know, we've got one block, we've got three blocks. Here's a quilt using floor blocks, floor blocks, four blocks even. But you could even use all of the same blocks or four different ones. But um, how much is it? 22 99 That's very, very good value for um, everything you get. And I like the final chapter that's called About the Author's Cat. Which is important, isn't it? Because if I wrote a book, mine would be called About the Author's Puppy. So she's got about oh, the author's cat. Meet Mufasa, Amanda's trusty quilt assist assistant, the head of quality control. Well, I think anyone who's got a cat knows all about that, don't they? That why is it they always end up lying on your quilts or your works? Um, and at the back of the book, it's all about Amanda and it tells you what her website is and her Instagram ad address. Um, Jedi craft girl but she is really she is clearly an experienced quilter but quite inspirational she is using quite bright playful colors I guess that's why it's called playful pre-cut quilts but also you know she does move into the more traditional things as well so 
to complement this brand new book, which um, I would start, if you've got them in your baskets, I would check out because we've had a lot of interest in this because it's a really, really lovely book. Um, I wouldn't want you to miss out. So we have got, to complement this, a few pre-cuts for you to look at. Um, let's start with the Lewis and Irene thalassophile. Thalassophile. Thalassophile means, I, I did this the other time, I love this fabric collection, it means lover of the sea. I think everybody's a thalassophile, aren't they? Not many people aren't. I love the sea anyway. So we'll start off with, the, oh, they've stuck it together. Such, such a shame, isn't it? I'm going to have to undo it. Um, so we're going to start with, there are two choices. You can either have the five inch um, set or you can have the 10 inch. And in each of them, there are 42 squares. Hold it still. So this is the five inch block, and I'm gonna to to turn around so you can see it. Um, and then you've got exactly the same fabrics in the 10 inch. So it depends what you want to make really, whether you have the five or the 10 inch. Um, so if I, I'm just going to undo just one of them because I have, I'll have to put all these back together in exactly the same order. I'm not actually going to do that. But I will put them back together, so I'm only going to open one of them, but it's really nice to see. So you've got, obviously, these are seaside prints. You've got this lovely print that's got crabs and sea urchins, turtles, seahorses, whales. Then you've got lovely ticking, because ticking's very seaside, isn't it? And then you've got these bubbles. So I like the colour palette that they've used for this. They've used a sort of a sand, a sandy colour, a taupey colour. And then they've used blue, but they haven't used a really bright royal blue. They've used that kind of faded seaside blue. And then added to that is this lovely pop of coral. Not red, so it's not red, white and blue. It's more cream, denim and coral, which is very British seaside, isn't it? It's very sort of faded beach up. So there's lots of prints going on here. You've got the seahorse print, you've got the seashell print, You've also got this other, um, it's sold out. Right, so this is sold out. This is sold out. Why will you stop shopping? Stop, I'm trying to sell stuff here. No, don't, that was a joke. It was a joke, don't stop shopping. So you can't have the five inch anymore, but you can have the 10 inch. But as I've opened the five inch, I'm gonna show you the colors. The other colour way that you can get is this really lovely um, green, but it's a real, again, like the blue and the coral, it's a very faded green, more like a sagey colour. So what I'm showing you now is the 10 inch. I'm just showing you the colours that are in the 5 inch, but this is the 10 inch block. Um, You'll also hear them called layer cakes. I think we're mode to sell the layer cakes, but um, they're 10 inches. And again, you get 42 squares, but I'm just showing you with the five inch what the colors are. So you get that same, you see the print that we have here, you get that also in the sandy color and it comes in, I think it comes in the green one as well. And oh, it comes in the, with the dark blue. So because you're getting quite big squares of these, and you're getting them in all these colorways. They are brilliant. You know that whatever ones of these colors, you don't have to think about color choice because color choice can be really difficult, which ones you should put together, but that all the hard work is done for you. So if you want to be making any seaside beach type items, if you want to make, um, well, quilts, obviously, because these are pre-cuts, often four quilts, but perfect for making up smaller items like little um, makeup bags, makeup, pouches, rolls, um, zip purses, join them together to make a lap quilt, but all the colours. And I, I like the way that they've put the ticking in with it as well. So you've got this ticking that's got the sandy colour background. You've got the one that's got the grey background. And then I have to go through all of them to find the other ticking ones. I like the, um, the boats as well. I think the boats are really nice. So you get the boats with the it's not white, again, because I told you all these colours are muted. It's more of an ivory. But you've got it with the blue, 
the sort of denim blue with the ivory boats and then you've got the ivory background with the blue boats so everything in here goes really goes really nice together look there's an, a nether ticking some of the fabrics you will find will be repeated more than once so you haven't got 42 different ones there's the odd one that is repeated and look there's another sailboats as well with that lovely sea green depends what sea you're in doesn't it one's the north sea one's the mediterranean depends what the weather's like doesn't it or i guess how is it or is it how deep the water is maybe look there's another i knew there was another ticking you see even if you just put i'm going to just move it out of the way even if you just put the tickings together they go really nicely, don't they? And when with the 10 inch, you get, you know, obviously that big size, but isn't that lovely? Even, even if you just chose the three tickings together, they look really lovely. Then you've got this print, this sort of bubbly, obviously, bubbly print, and you get that in the blue and the sand. It's called Bumbleberry, which we actually, we did have a look up. Bumbleberry is the name of an American pie. Bumbleberry pie, which is a mixture of different berries, like, I guess, cranberries and things. And that's called a bumbleberry. And that's, look, there's another bumbleberry there. There's loads and loads of different colours of those. And I think that there's a coral one as well. I'm never going to get these back in the right order, am I? I've got to hope. Anybody remember what order they were in? <laughs> so look, you've got all of those all of those different bumbleberries but that shows you just in that selection there that is the color palette of the whole collection so when i if you look at this um this is your feature print this is your main print that's on the cover that uses all of those colors you've got the sand in there you've got that sort of sea green that's in the octopus you've got that color this um marine blue is in here as well and then you've got the coral. Wouldn't this make fantastic bunting? You could cut all of these into to triangles. So you could have 40, well, depending on the size of your triangles, you could probably get two out of one of these if you do them small enough. So you'd have 84 bun lots of bunting. That would um, go a long way, wouldn't it? But, you know, I know you don't have to always make quilts at the right time of year. This would be great for making, say you wanted to make a picnic quilt or a picnic blanket, these would look fantastic and all you'd have to do is join them to join them together maybe put some sashing in between with some plain color fabric if you picked up um, just a plain color any one of these if I was going to do it, I'd pick up a plain coral join all of these squares together or some of them would be massive otherwise of, with the sashing you'd have a really lovely blanket give that, that's some fantastic for gift for somebody isn't it make them a picnic picnic blanket or it could be, and then you'd, all you'd need is a rug to wrap round you and you could go out, sit on the beach in November with your sea picnic blanket, flask of coffee, slice of Victoria sandwich. Oh God, I'd love a slice of Victoria sandwich. Anyway, we're not talking about Victoria sandwich, we're talking about fabric. So um, I'll just put them there because I've got to put them all back together again later. <laughs> Oh, Jenny says she loves my dress. Well, I made my dress from a pair of curtains that I bought on eBay. £3.49. This is one curtain and this is the other curtain. <laughs> I had to wash them three times because I bought them on eBay and they smell a bit like sort of an old musty house. Um, but amazing they didn't fade, but they're quite, it's quite thick. No, it's, it, I, no, I don't smell like an old musty house. And I wish I could remember the pattern, but it was a pattern that I bought from here, here, when we were sewing quarter here. I'll think of it in a minute then. Anyway, let's talk about charm packs, not about my yellow curtain dress. Um, lovely Moda charm pack called Canning Day. Um, Corey Yoda, who designed this, she was inspired to do this by her grandmother's kitchen. So I thought, oh, it'll be full of saucepans and things, but it's not actually. It's been, would, oh, look, we'll have to take that one out as well. Um, so she was inspired by the times that she spent in her grandma's kitchen doing lots of cooking and baking. But what she's done is she's used really sort of pretty florals, large florals, small florals, but all with this lovely colour pattern 
palette that's very vintage, that sort of vintage green. There's some nice, really low volume textured planes in here as well. So you've got a, a whole mixture. You've got large prints and small prints. They all feature a nice sort of vintage mint green with this really sort of quite a vibrant print, pink, not as much as a fuchsia, but quite that sort of bright pop of pink, but very vintage. This, I love, love, love this one. That really orangey yellow, um, like the centre of a Narcissus yellow with the green. But they are very yesteryear. I love that expression, very yesteryear. Sort of vintage and oh, I love the these um, textured ones are really good. So the colour palette that's used throughout this, they've got this, um, it's like a sort of a linen, hessian weave print. But you can imagine these, you know, imagine a grandma having a penny made in these colours. But there's a lot of, each print will then come in each of the colourways. I could sort them all out like that, you see. So you could either use them and arrange them by colour or use them and arrange them by print. But the great thing is, is that you don't have to think, oh, which colours go together? Everything in this charm pack, which is the beauty of pre-cuts. It's why I buy a lot of pre-cuts. I'm not very good at colour. I love colour, but I'm not always very good at putting it together. So I like to buy pre-cuts because you know that all of these colours go together because someone who is very good at colour has designed it that way. So that's lovely. I love those that green display. And then you've got this one that's a more of a corally pink. And again, all of the prints are in all of those colours. So, so you can take, if you take those, those are the same prints, but in all the different colours. But so they are quite springy because they are those sort of really fresh colours. But because they're vintage fresh colours, very 1950s, I'd say, they will take you through all seasons. And if you um if you get the if you if you if there's any left, if you manage to buy the pre-cut quilts, there are a lot of the quilts in this book. This one. Um a lot of the pre-cut quilts use these um, five inch charm packs so you'll be able to use them to do that but aren't they lovely they're just so pretty and then you get a stripe you get a stripe look I remember and I said with the other with the odd print and they tend to do it with the sort of the more popular ones or the ones that are more versatile you'll get two of them but there's not many but they have arranged them in this pack then we go to there's just a white but it's not just any white I need to clear the table look if you look at this white, it's got a tiny leaf and floral print in it. Oh, look, Paul's getting in close. Coming in close. Now you can see it's a really, it looks like a plain white, but it isn't a plain white. It's got those that sort of print inside it as well. That's my one, on, my one and only zoom gone. And then you get the pretty ones. But then when we get to the back, I think this is a really nice addition. I'm going to lay all of these out so you can see how well these go. You get this really lovely um, brown. But it's like a grey brown. It's, a, it's that vintage colour that you, that you get in with these. It's not chocolate. I would say it's more of a grey brown but it fits beautifully with all of these prints and you know that it fits well because they've used some of the colours in it so whichever ones of these that you put together and in the pack I think yes you do you get 42 squares all of them are five inches and they've all been beautifully pinked around the edges so they won't fray so that you can just sew them together you don't need to cut them you can just sew them all together make all sorts of things from quilts I mean you can make yourself a tote bag with nine of these couldn't you tote bag front look at this you see we could go I would go that one and then I'd go that one and then I'd put that one and then I'd have a little because that's my favorite color I'd put that one in and then I'd have a bit of pink but you know you can put any of these but if you put nine together I've got to see can you see what I'm doing one two three Four, five, six, seven, and then another one of those, and nine. And then that is your tote bag front, isn't it? And 
Nine on the back. That's 18. Still got loads left. Still got over the half the pack left. <coughs> so if you just use these for one of them, you could make seven nines for you. You could make loads of them. Loads of them. Five. Five. But any of these colours would will go together and the lovely thing is is that you can then just sort of mix and match and think oh well I'll change that around but equally join them all together and you can make um, a lap quilt but aren't they lovely just really nice I just I think it's just so lovely when someone else has done all the hard work for you and chosen all of your fabric so that you don't have to I don't know how they get them to stacked up so neatly though they must have a machine because you can imagine trying to get I've got to try and get these all back together afterwards. So I'm going to just pile those back up. I'm to sort out later. So I'm going to show you the some of our exclusive pre-cuts. Now, these are not any pre-cuts. These are extra pre-cuts. Now, they should be called that, really. So where should we start? I'm good. We are going to start with, look, they've just told me the code. I've got to find it now. G, yes, look, found it. G-S-U-U-76. -U so these are called, on this piece of fabric, hang on, I've just got to give it a shake. Fat quarters, but but they're not fat quarters. It's a lie. They're bigger than fat quarters. So if you haven't bought fat quarters or know what a fat quarter is, basically what you do is you cut a metre of fabric. A normal quilting fabric is 44 inches wide. Um, then you cut half a metre of that. That's confusing, isn't it? But actually, in America, they cut half a yard. So we're now 20 inches, 20, 18 to 20 inches, depending on whether you're half a yard. Or, if it's half a yard, it's 18 inches. If it's half a metre, it's 20 inches. But the half of the width is 22. So a normal fat quarter, particularly like the Moda ones, if it's an American one, they will be 18 by 22 inches. But these fat quarters which is the sewing court sewing oh god i said it sewing street exclusive oh, i knew i was going to say it's important um sewing street exclusive ones you get four printed on every panel they are 27 by 20 inches and what i think is brilliant about this if you've ever used fat quarters before you'll know that they're brilliant fat quarters are brilliant you can use them for loads and loads of things but it would be always nice sometimes to have a little bit more so say you want to make a bag with something if you had a little bit more you could make a matching handle or if say if you had four or six or eight fat quarters you could join that little bit more together to bind around the whole edge of it well these they should be called fat quarter and a little bit more i need to think of a more catchy title than that anyway in each of they are called Fat Quarter Plus on here. Fat Quarters with a little bit more. Um, on each of these panels, and I'm going to show them all to you in a minute, you get four of these Fat Quarters with a little bit more. But they have been exclusively designed for us, by us, and printed for us, by us. Um, and all those prints, in the same way as I've showed you the charm packs, they all go together. So this one is called Hello Poppet. Hello Poppet and it features a really lovely cornflower blue with a faded poppy red and a sunflower yellow and you've got seed heads, flowers, tiny little flowers, this lovely vintage circle print. But how lovely is that one? And they're all printed on one panel so you just cut them up and do whatever you want with them. So that's Hello Poppet of that I don't know why it's called that. You should ask them. Well, yeah, it's really cute. It's a really cute name. But have you ever found you can never fold things back the same way that someone else has folded them? Yeah, I know. I can't do it. Can't do it. I can't do it. It's just going to have to go like that. Oh, God, that looks rubbish now. Okay, we'll just put that to one side. So the next one is e V E U U. 72 and this one is called ditsy bitsy fat quarter and a little bit more fat quarter plus 
Remember, 20, 20 by 27 inches, which is quite big. It, it does actually say it in um, centimetres on here, 70 by 50. This is lovely, isn't it? So you've got a pink gingham, which is a dusty, dusky pink. You've got a blue spot, which is a dusty blue. You've got this little ditzy floral print, which is um, the little roses, which is the pink of the check, and the leaves are the blue of the dot. And then you've got, so these are your low volume prints. This is the mid volume print. And then this print here, this is your feature main print, which uses the pinks and the blues, but then also introduces a matching dusty, um, green but it has this really bright pop of yellow colour outlined by the pink as well really pretty there's lots and lots of different things you could do with this um, you could make if you wanted to make one of those um, fabric bags that you put all your carrier bags in you could use this for the outside you could use the spot to bind the edge of it if you wanted to make a makeup bag um, I'd make from this I'd make like a matching wash bag and makeup bag set so you could um, make your wash bag from this large feature print then you could line it with the pink gingham and then you could make the makeup bag from the pink gingham and line it with the blue there's lots and lots of options and remember because this is the fat quarter and a little bit more that little bit more you could use to make the handles or to bind the edges or to put on the end edges of the zips so these are fantastic value for money and you will not be able to buy these anywhere else because they are exclusive to all ours made by us designed by us created by us and sold by us although if you buy it it'll be owned by you right i want to do this one next and this one is called nduu65 and it's called the staffordshire mantelpiece set one so um i'll do it that way so you can see it so it's got it's the colors in it are they um i'll turn it around so you can see it when you look at it closely that's just so you could see it um it features that lovely wedgwood blue with the sort of taupey grey background colour. So you've got these real classic Staffordshire ornaments of the, oh, what's that dog? Um, is it a King Charles Spaniel? Quite possibly. I've got a Cocker Spaniel. They don't look like that, but they've got the same ears. So I think that is a King Charles Spaniel. But it's that real classic Staffordshire China decoration that you put on your mantelpiece and a cat as well. Um, and then you've got this lovely, really fun teapot and cup. They look a bit dancey. The teapot sort of dancey, pouring into the teacup. Lovely. And then you've got a floral print and then a low and then a low volume print that's just little ditzy pieces that will be really good to coordinate with it. So I'm thinking kitchen makes for this. You know, you could join, you could put them all together. You could make a little penny with one of them. Or if you wanted to make a full-size apron, you could make a patchwork one. Um, oven gloves, tea towels, tea cozies, chair seat covers. You know, one of the, one piece would be big enough to make one of those padded chair seat covers for your, for your kitchen. Um, so if you bought two of these, because there is another one. There is another one, isn't there? Let me just check. Right, so if we go for EWUU69, this is the same print. I'm going to just lie this one on top so you can see the difference. It's the same colourways, so it matches exactly with the other one, but the prints are slightly different. So the cats and dogs are bigger. You've got bigger floral these are in large florals compared to the others and you've got a really lovely swirly print so if you bought both of these you've got eight chair seat covers or six chairs and a tea cozy and a cushion so these two uh, would be a really good for those sort of kitchen mates because they coordinate if i um should i just put that one next to that one you see C, C, 
that goes really well together, doesn't it? So you've got the smaller dogs and cats and the larger dogs and cats, but you can see how all the colours go. So set one is the smaller prints with the teacups and set two is the larger print that's got the bigger florals and the swirls and the flowers. But remember, they are 70 by 50 centimetres each, which is about 20, well, actually, they've written on there, 27 and a half by 19 and a half. So it does say fat quarter plus, but if you think of it as fat quarter and a little bit more, there's a lot you can make for it. So you won't find these anywhere else in the whole world ever. Ever, 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 except for from us. They are very popular as well. Very, very popular. Put them in your basket and don't forget to check out. Or they'll be gone. So that's those. How many more have we got? We've done that one and that one and that one and that one. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, my thingy's falling out. Ooh. I don't think my ears are big. I think my ears are too small. Mm, I need bigger ears. Oh, hang on. I've fallen out completely. I definitely... Uh, I need bigger, like, ear height of my ears, not ear holes. Longer ears. That's what I need, is longer ears. This one um, is KZUU20. And this one is called Marmalade. Stem Marmalade. Love this one. Love this one. Very... Um, Vintage, very retro. Look at these lovely, really simplistic flowers. I love these. And they've it features a very soft, dusty blue in the background with a burnt orange and then a slightly deeper, um, more like a Wedgwood blue. And that's on this one. And those four, well, three colours plus white is, are the only colours used in this palette, but they go very beautifully together. So you haven't got a bright blue and a bright orange. They have got that really vintage feel to them, which just blends so well. So you've got the, the small leaves here, the little flowers on stems, the bigger ones here, and then this stem repeat pattern. So these can be used for all sorts of things. You know, all sorts, small items, make beauty, you know, one of these, you can make a lovely makeup brush roll and line it with the nether and I think that's what's really useful is that when you make stuff, whenever I make anything, whether it's a zip up pouch or a cushion or a tote bag, I always line it. But you can always, you know, prints like this, you can keep in your stash and use them as your lining because if I'm making something or say I want to put a pocket in a dress, I always do it as something that's a bit, um, has a bright look to it. You know, if you put one of those, um, concealed pockets in the inside of a bag always use something that's a, you know a little bit of a surprise a flash of color and prints like these although they are beautiful in their own right are really useful for keeping for things like that when you want to line something when you want a a less expensive way of lining rather than just using a plain fabric these sort of prints but remember these have been designed so they all go together so you don't need to think about it love that set marmalade I had marmalade on toast yesterday. Oh, God, I love marmalade. Although, I have to say, my favourite is lemon and lime, not orange. Um, this is the same print, and this is SYUU83. And this one is called Fruit Punch. So, I was going to say it's the same design, but it isn't. It's almost... It's a similar design. It's got the same sort of vintage retro feel. It's got the same um, flowers, shaped flowers. But then this one, oh, it's just falling off my ear. My ears aren't big enough. Um, this one's got like sort of cherries rather than flowers. And then, uh, and then this has got the things. But if you, if you bought the marmalade one, it would all go together. Oh, it's just kind of... Right. Um, it, it would all go together anyway, because the the blue flowers in this one match in the same colourway, will match with that one. And then the reds in here go together. So that one is called Stem Fruit Punch. Remember, it's 
bigger than your normal fat quarters. And when you when you put one of these in your basket, you will get this whole panel. You don't just get one of these extra large fat quarters. You will get all of them all printed together. So you can make yourself a dress, couldn't you? You can make yourself a curtain dress like I've made. Just one, one panel for the front and it would be split in four. You know, because the cotton... It's 100% cotton, but it's a really nice quality. It's got a bit of weight to it. You know, not all cottons are equal. Some are more equal than others. That's a famous quote. Um, and this is quite, this is a good quality. It's got a little bit of weight for it. So you could use it for the kind of the cushion and the bag, the sort of the more solid things, but you could also use it for dressmaking as well. So shall we have a look at a spot? And I'm going to choose this one fxuu02 and this one is called misty blue fat quarter plus set two um there are a few more that i'm not going to get through but they will all be on the website listed below where we are here so if you want to have a look at any of the others there are photos on the website of the whole panel unfolded love this one you've got that really deep blue here that coordinates beautifully with the lighter blue gingham then you've got a spot and a floral using a very sort of um, dusty mauve color more like a lavender color that actually coordinates really well with the royal blue so again think when you're making it of double-sided things of linings that you know that all of this goes together and you will get all four and you can see you know when I when I waft it a bit it's a nice quality cotton. It's got a little bit of weight. And you, when you get your panel, it will be like this. I've used these panels before and you always get white fabric around the edges of it. It's really useful. Don't throw out the white fabric pieces. If you want to um, make something and personalise it, you want to do a name, what you do, you get one of the um, heat erasable pens that we had in our early bird offer. You write their name on here. You just um, stitch, embroider over it in a back stitch, press it, there's your lines gone. And then you can sew that to the front of whatever you're making. Say you're making like a, um, a shoe bag, shoe bag for school. You know, you could make it from, you could make a shoe bag from school from that gingham panel, embroider their name onto one of these white bits around the edge, sew that in the middle, that's it. Nobody be pinching their shoes. So, we have got, in the next hour, Susan Briscoe coming up, a.k.a. the Queen of Shashko. Um, I know you're all ready, all excited. I'm excited. Luckily, I was lucky enough to, um, well, I've met Susan before, but to have a lovely chat with her. We talked about old quilts as well as Shashko and all sorts. Um, I know you're all really excited to see her. She is going to explain to you how wonderful Shashko is. So, do have a look at the website. See all the products, get ahead, get it in your basket so that you can just sit back and relax and watch what Susan's doing. So we're just going to go to a quick break so I can sort my ears out um, and we'll be back very shortly with Susan. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, 
I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric, and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just six pounds. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. And welcome back. So we've had a complete change. We've now got all the shashko on the table and Susan is in the studio. So very, very excited to meet her. Um, we have got a lot on offer for you today from threads to books to fabric and kits all sorts of things so let's meet susan to start with hello good morning susan hi i don't know which camera i'm meant to be looking at today in the new studio so can you um put it out? you can just look in that one i can there. just look in here just look in that look straight ahead which is quite useful because you can see yourself at the same time i can time. see you as well which is absolutely great yeah, so i, I love see. the new split screen i have idea. to look in that one and you look in that one oh, that's then, fabulous and then, then then you can see yourself as well um thanks so much for coming back on i know all of our viewers love you well, it's very, very nice to be back here, actually. Um, I know I was on the station very, very early on, back in February, I think, was the last time mm, I was here. Long time ago. Yeah, it, it, it does seem like an awfully long time ago. And a lot of things happened since, of course, including the new panels coming out, which we've 
got for you here. Yeah. Um, just looking at the general chaos that I create the minute I come into the studio and thinking, <laughs> I, I know it looks messy, but this is nothing like my, the state of my workroom. That's, that's even worse, actually, with things all over the place at the moment. But yeah, it's really exciting because we've had um, two new panels have been brought out by Olympus, who brought out the, the first two that I made last year. We have got, um, let me see, we've got six different colours in the new Camon Crest panels. We have got six different colours in the new um, geometric panels. We've also got the panels that we had last year. And I got really fired up when these new panels were coming out because I thought, now, now I can start making some really amazing Sashko samplers where I can have you know, two different lots of Camon designs. I could have two different lots of... Um, of the geometric designs, I can mix the two together, I can have them all on the same colour, I can have two different colours together. You know, the possibilities have just suddenly become endless and I absolutely love that. Wow. Yeah. So if if anyone's watching today and they haven't tried Shashko before, um, tell us just what is it and why? Yeah, what is it and where does it come from? Whenever people ask me that sort of question, I always think that sounds like some sort of Zen koan. It, <laughs> it, it comes from Japan. Okay. Um, a, a koan, by the way, is a sort of puzzle that monks think about in Zen. It comes from Japan and um, it was originally used for farmers and fishermen's clothes and household goods and anything that had to be really tough and hard wearing. It's a way of making the fabric stronger, warmer and it also looks absolutely gorgeous. There's hundreds of different patterns. Uh, quite a lot of them, of course, were covered in the book that I did, which was the ultimate Sashka sauce, but which we have got for you today as well. Um, there's what they call Hitomi yeah, Gashi. Oh, it around, yes, I will. Remember, if it faces you. Oh, faces me. Yeah. It faces me. Look, Sorry. There, you go. there we go. And then it's, I put it on, the, on the. Yeah. It's the first time working with the overhead camera. I know, really, I know. It's, it's really, really exciting. I, I, as all the viewers will notice, I'm constantly turning them around the wrong way, but if it's yeah. facing me, you can oh, see that, it. Oh, that is just brilliant. So we have got that for sale today, which covers. Everything. It, everything it does. You need to it, know. it covers pretty much everything you need to know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wrote it something like 15 years ago, and it's incredible. It just hasn't dated. Um, I, I just put absolutely everything that I knew about Sashko into that book. At the so time. it's used for it traditionally for make clothes hard. Wearing. Yeah, it's it's to make things harder wearing. So it would be used for things like a hand tanned jacket that a farmer or a fisherman might wear. And it could be used for household goods like feroshki, which are big wrapping cloths, or for doing zabaton cushions, which you sit them on the floor. There's lots and lots of different things that you can do with it. And of course, it appealed to me because before I actually started doing sashka, I had started doing quilting. I started doing patchwork and quilting. That came about when I was working as an English teacher in Japan. I worked in a small town called Yuzumachi, which is in the, the far northwest of Japan in Yamagata Prefecture. Um, when I was there, I didn't actually start doing my patchwork while I was in town. I just sort of gathered fabrics. I mean, we all know what that's like. Um, <laughs> yes. I sort of saved my fabrics up. I was mostly mm. doing tea ceremony. I was learning how to sew kimono as well in my neighbor's shop. And it was when I went back there, this, this was 1991, 92, when I went back there in 2000 for the Millennium New Year, that was when I got completely grabbed by Sashko. And the type of Sashko that really grabbed me, I've got this teeny, weeny, weeny little piece I'm going to put there for you. You can oh, see it on the beautiful. overhead. It's only partly stitched, this one. This is what you call Hitomizashi. It means one stitch Sashko. And you can see from this little tiny piece mm. that I've got um, that it's done by stitching lines of running stitch going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you do a second set going up and down the other way. And it's when you put the second set in, the pattern suddenly appears as if by magic. Now that's the style of sashiko okay. that was traditional to that area, you see. But although I lived there, I didn't really see a lot of it around um, in the early 90s. I saw a, li a little bit. But since then, um, like my ne ex-next door neighbour, Reiko Domon, um, you know, from, the, from this town in Yusa, she had started teaching sashiko classes. And it had all just like snowballed um, mm. and there was just a lot more of it about. And I was fascinated by this style of Sashko. So I managed to get some lessons while I was there for my holiday. And uh, it all went from there, really. Uh, total addiction. It looks I, I, really uh, complicated. It's not. It's, it's not. Th there's a stitching sequence for every geometric pattern. And okay. like I said before, with these Hitomizashi patterns, you're stitching, you're first going one way. And then, you, then you're stitching going the so other way. So you only really need to know how to do running stitch. It is. It's, it's running stitch. It is literally just running stitch. 
which which is quite simple. It's not hard to do. No, um, but no, it looks, it's not at all. When, the, the, when you look at the um, the quilt behind you, that's and then it looks so complex. And yeah, I'll, I'll talk. And I'll talk a little bit about this one behind me actually, because this is the quilt that sort of kickstarted the idea of this kind of working in blocks thing that I'm, I'm doing here. Um, I did a book that was called Japanese Quilt Blocks to Mix and Match, and we decided to put some Sashko blocks in that book. Oh, by the way, Sashko means little stab or little pierce. I'm sure a lot of people know that now. No, but we have, we've got, oh, well, we'll have, we'll lots have a lot of, of new people, people as well. We've got beginners yeah. and experience. Yeah. So, we so it's, it's called Little Stab or Little Pierce. And um, anyway, I wanted to do some sampler quilts for this book. It was, it was a block book. Um, and I wanted to mix and match the sashko patterns and patchwork patterns. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll make the sashko blocks the same size. And all the pieces on the, the quilt behind me, so waving my hand in that mm. general direction. You can see. Um, <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. They're all different Camon crest designs. Now, families in Japan, everybody has a, a Camon crest. It's a little bit like our heraldic crest, but not quite so sort of formalised. And they, they were used on things like um, kimono. For example, if you have formal kimono, you have the, the Camon crest dyed on a little tiny piece, only about an inch across, a little tiny dot on the back of the kimono, and on the back of the sleeves, and on the front of the two sleeves. That's for a very formal um, five-crested kimono for a woman. You would use your family crest that way. Um, you can have your family crest on all kinds of different things. They, they were used a lot, um, you know, if you go to Japanese museums, you will see things from the 18th and 19th centuries that belong to samurai families. And it's, it's almost like a logo, like a brand logo. You'll see it on everything. It'll be on the sake cups, the sake flasks, um, on the Noran curtains that they used to hang over the doors, on the bedding used in so many different ways and they're also used decoratively so you don't just have to stick to using your own family crest you can use somebody else's as well so they're just wonderful designs they're based on leaves they're based on flowers they're based on natural phenomena i mean we've got one that's a uh, little mount fuji for example um just looking at the ones out on screen at the moment we've got we've got the moon and some clouds on the top row the the net one that's next to it on the top row the one that looks like a sort of swirly sort of flower thing mm. that is actually a a, like a hybrid between two different designs. It's a plum blossom uh, crossed with this triple comma motif, which I've actually got here as a small design as well. You'll see that in a little while. But there's lots and lots and lots of different patterns, so much scope. So that's more the pictorial end of okay. Sashko. And then you've got the geometric end of it as well. And I, I just love both. So your new panels feature both? They do, they do. Do you want to show I, us? Well, I'll show you. I've got show some out of the packets here. Okay, mine are all in <laughs> right. packets, okay, so okay. I can show you them when we come to giving you all the codes. But I'll show us you what. what's in the yeah. packet, so okay, I don't have to okay. open mine. Yeah, that's quite handy, actually. Somebody was saying last week they didn't like things rustling too much on, on screen. Oh, rustle, <laughs> rustle. Sorry. But, um, yeah, I, I brought, real I brought some others in. I'll just <laughs> flick this one out here. So this there are four different designs. There's four different designs. And each of the designs comes in the same in six colours. Yes, so there's the twenty-four six different choices. Colours. Yeah, and we've got all there's of them. <laughs> we've got all of them. So they'll there's all be on the so website. Much choice. Oh, I just realised now. I can put this. I can put it facing me. You. This is taking a little bit of getting used to. So all of these of are on the website. All twenty-four for yes. you to choose. So yes. tell me about the fabric yeah. first that they're printed on. Well, the fabric we were having a bit of fun earlier on pronouncing this. Yeah. It's called samugi, samugi, and it literally means something along the lines of spun with a little slub. Um, so you'll notice with the fabric, it's got a black, um, I'm trying Ooh, to which way around it really is. really close We've, to that fabric? Oh, oh no, that's great, that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got a black thread and it's got a coloured thread. You, you tend to think that the, the yeah, obvious thing... Just, can you, sorry, so if you oh, just sorry. move it over to your right. Oh, oh yes, yeah, hang on a minute, I can see it better there. Keep going, keep going. Oh, there, oh, there, there we go. go. Right. right. Now we, you can see. Now you can see one of the designs really close. Oh, yeah, and you can see all of the, the weave in the fabric, too. That's so you can fantastic. see that black, can't you? Yeah, there's a black thread and a coloured thread in each one. Now, with the, um, you would tend to think, as, as I was saying before, that the obvious thing would be that they would warp up the loom with black and then just keep changing the weft colours. But actually, it's the other way around. The colour is in the warp and the weft, in other words, the thread going back and forth, that is the black thread. Right. But because they sort of share this black thread, they all seem to coordinate with each other. 
It's so amazing. you could buy different coloured panels yes, and they were yes, all matched? Yes, you could. Oh, you okay. could. They, they would all look really, really good together. Lovely. The one that I've got in front of me at the moment, this is, um, what have we called it? Have we called this? Deep Red. Deep Red, yeah, I think that's what I call it as well. Um, the company that made them in Japan, actually, Olympus, they just have code numbers. They don't give them colour names, so we have to sort of make those bits up a little bit and okay. put it in English. Yeah, the first one we're looking at there, that is um, a double ginkgo leaf. And the ginkgo leaf motif is just one of my favourites. Actually, there is another ver variation on the ginkgo leaf on the original panel that we did last year as well. There's a triple ginkgo leaf on that. And then next to it, over on the other side, we have got um, a plum blossom with the moon. And that little sort of crinkly edge mm. around the plum blossom there, that is the way that you traditionally show a snowflake, the edge of a snowflake in Japan. In so Japanese that's winter art. then? Yeah, you could say that's a, a wintry one. The, the nice thing with something like the ginkgo, you could do that either as a, a summery one, you could do it in greens, you know, if you want to bring some colour in. You could do it in the autumn colour, in which case you'd be going for the bright yellows. And I've, I've got some that I've stitched up in colour. We're going to come to that in a moment. So I've on these panels, so all of them. the um, patterns are pre-printed for you? Yes, they are. It's a washable ink, so it will come out in the wash. So do not wash them before <laughs> you start. Yeah. Whatever you do. Do not pre-wash your fabrics. No, that is not a good idea because you'll end up with a blank piece of fabric. Please, oh, okay. please, please don't do that. How do you, do they need, is it cold, warm? What sort of wash? It comes off in quite cold water. Okay. I got a bit over enthusiastic with some of mine. I put them in fairly hot water and managed to sli slightly shrink them, but more about that later. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did them a little bit too warm. Um, but it, it does come out pretty easily. Just so swoosh it around the water. Then. Yeah, it doesn't really want to be too hot at and all. And all of the lines are printed so that you just work your running stitch across. Yeah, them. What, what Olympus have done is they've actually copied my stitch length off the big quilt behind me. Oh, wow. So they're an eighth, approximately an eighth of an inch long or three millimetres. And the gap is around about two millimetres or one and a half millimetres, um, if you like to be metrically inclined, that is. So, so it sort of mimics just, my stitching. So you can actually, I'm just looking at the ones mm -hmm. on mine, like this um, one, you can actually, you just stitch on top of your yeah, stitches. You stitch, you stitch right on top of the stitches. Um, and that's how you do all your stitching lines. So this panel, that's amazing. you know I was saying about how I love those Hitomi Zashi patterns, the ones that are the... the they're called one stitch sash curl, how it actually translates. We put four of them here at the top. Um, they're actually all variations on, well, these three here are variations on a stitch called rice stitch. And the one at the top is a little cross pattern. But you actually stitch that, like I showed you that little square at the beginning. You first go, you know, horizontally, and then you go up and down. I might do a little bit on that one later, actually. Um, and then these other ones here, the other three, the rice stitch variations, mm. they've got diagonal lines as well. I've got them all stitched up, by the way, on this sample I'm going to show you later. Oh, okay. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll show you the other half of the panel on this one. It's probably easiest to flip it over so, like that. So the one that we're looking at at the moment is Camon 20. Yeah. And this... And then it comes in, ooh. what are the colour What are the colour names? Deep red. We've got deep red. I think we've got an indigo -y blue. Have we called it indigo Dark blue? green. Yeah, the dark green Indigo yummy. blue, mm -hmm. black, grey, and light blue. Yeah, yeah. The grey is a sort of a beigey kind of grey. It's not a neutral grey. Okay, so this is the... Yeah, I, I tend to think of it as taupe, actually. I usually put that brackets afterwards. This, yeah, grey, so this brackets, is the grey. The That's the grey. The That's the grey, yes. Yeah. Okay. I love that one. I've got, I've got plans for another sampler on that as well at the moment. Um, it's a very natural colour, isn't it? It is, and it goes with everything. It does, and doesn't looks, it? It looks really, really lovely. lovely. But, you know, going back to what else is on this panel, we have got, going down the middle of it, mm. we've got the names of the seasons written in Japanese. Oh. Which I thought was a nice touch. Everybody loves some kanji, and I thought, well, I'll put some kanji on my new panel. What's kanji? Oh, it's, it's, it means the Japanese characters. So oh, at the top, okay. at the top it's spring then summer, then autumn, and then winter. Okay. And I just thought that was nice because, you know, with these come on crest designs, we've got something sort of from every season on here, really. Um, this one up here is the, the iris. And you, you'd see irises in Japan, uh, they, the iris season is sort of just after the cherry blossom season. So it's May. Um, so we've got this wonderful iris design here. And the one over here um, on the, the right-hand side that is that plum crossed with the, the comma motif that's on the top of the quilt behind me. I thought we've got to put that one in. So it's such a oh nice yeah, one to stitch yeah. that one. Um, I've got a bat and the moon. 
it's nothing to do with Halloween, but it just made me think of Halloween. I thought I want to have that so for that's autumn. an autumn one. <laughs> the, the things to do with moon viewing are very much this season. You okay. know, the, the autumn moon viewing is a big thing. In the same way that cherry blossom viewing is a big thing in, in the spring. And then over on the right hand side, this one here with the swirl, that's, uh, that's Fuji, that's wisteria. They actually, Fuji, it sounds the same as Mount Fuji, but it's written with a different kanji character right, if you're okay. writing it in Japanese. And I, I think that is such a lovely design as well. So it's very pretty. We, we balance them all up so you can either keep them, you know, as a, a complete panel, so it looks nice as a, a whole panel, or you can cut them out and kind of use them like quilt blocks. So what would you use them for? If, you, if somebody was going to buy one of these panels, what would you suggest? Anything and everything, really. As I said, you can do the whole thing as a wall hanging. Um, you could yeah, cut a of it the two there. sections of the larger blocks, which are approximately nine and a half inches square. You could cut those two together, seam them in the middle, turn them into a table runner, quite a long one. Wow. Beautiful. And then you'd have a nice set of coasters to go with it as well. <laughs> yeah, you could use them for placemats. I have put them in the middle of cushions. I think I've actually got one lurking somewhere. Oh, have you? On Show here. Us. Have I? Did I bring it in today? Oh, no, I might be bringing it in the second hour. Okay. Um, That's fine. Yeah, I think I am. I bring Wait it till 11 hour. and you can see Wait the till cushion 11. then. Come back at 11 and you'll, <laughs> you'll see what I do with, with cushions with these. Um, unless it's sitting underneath this lot. Oh, it is. Here we go. Here we go. This is just one of my favourite things to do with this kind of panel. It's so quick and easy. Square in the middle. Whoops. Turn it the right yeah, way around yeah. to face me. <laughs> it there takes we go. a while to remember that. So it? it's stunning. just got one of the designs in the middle. That is actually on the new panels. Um, on the new geometric one, which I'll come to ones. in but a moment. Um, except I think I'll nip, I think this was the original version of it actually, which I, I drew using templates, what, you know, just drew straight on the fabric. Um, in my book, it shows you how to draw lots and lots of different sashiko patterns by drawing a grid and then using yeah, a series of circle you. templates with them. So I think that was actually done that way. It wasn't it wasn't actually off the new panels, but it is the same design that's that's on there. And I've, I've just edged it with a piece of stripe at the top, bottom, piece down the side, and then a popper backing on it, just like an envelope back. And, you know, you've got yeah, a cushion cover. Yeah, that's very effective, it, isn't it's it? It's so easy to do. And to be honest... The and it's something lovely that you can... Because it's hand-stitching as well. It's very meditative, isn't it? It's very mindful. You can, you can really kind of get evening. yourself lost in it. Um, it's put the, put the fire on, isn't it, stitching? It is. It's <laughs> I, I stitch a lot watching DVDs, actually, I have yes. to confess. It's, it's sort of my evening thing. I've always got something now on, on hand. Um, it is, it's a relaxing thing. It's a thing you can pick up and put down, and you can just kind of get lost in the stitching. Um, Does it matter too much if it's not perfect, if you can't get all your running stitches the same length? Is it okay? Well, having having all of the, the stitches printed oh, for you will Oh, of course, they're all printed, so you don't even lot, need to think yeah. about it, do you? But when, when we stitch Sashko, we kind of pleat the fabric onto the tip of the needle, which I, I will demo for you later. Yes, could you? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. And particularly when you're doing something like, say, a long curve, like around this moon here, you can get a lot of stitches on the needle in one So it's not, it's it's one movement, it's not up yeah, and down. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not up and down. You it's don't like hand quilting, then. A little bit, yeah, but you can get a lot more stitches on than that, yeah. a lot more. They, they call it unshin in Japanese, actually, which mm. kind of is translated as moving needle, which is strange because it's the fabric that moves onto the needle and the needle kind of stays pretty still. Okay. I'll, I'll show you the geometric one from the new set as well. So which one is this one? Geo. This is Geo. This is the blue one I've got here. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful. Like that. That's that's what I think of the real traditional shashko. Well, colour. they they are. You, you're going to see a lot more in the way of um, geometric designs on old pieces. Oh, in fact, beautiful. I've seen very very few pictorial old pieces. But I I do have in my collection an old Faroshki wrapping cloth that's got a camel crest on it, and that's what sort of set me up with the camel crest idea. But actually, finding one of those on an old piece of sashko is, is a pretty unusual thing. So but this you will one see is all of these UN patterns. nine nine one eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the panel that you've got mm -hmm. there. So if you want that one, that's the one there. Geo 20, indigo blue. Yeah. There we go. I'll talk you through the patterns on this, shall I? Yeah. Yes, I just Great. wanted to show them. So if you want the one that Susan's going to talk about, it's one on the screen at the moment. Geo 20, indigo blue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okie dokie. Um, right. On this one, we've we decided we would alternate between curved patterns and straight line patterns. So when you see the whole panel opened out, 
you know, it's, it's curve, mm. curve, 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 and then square, square, you know, straight, straight, straight. Yes. So we, yeah. we did it like that. We tried to make it so that if you're going to keep it as a complete panel, it looks nice and balanced. But on the other hand, if you're going to cut it up, you've got a lot of variety there. Because I, I really love the idea that everybody cuts these and does very different things. And in fact, I've got a Facebook group running now. We've called it after the Ultimate Sashka Source Book. Mm. So if you want to join that, by all means do. Um, we're getting on for close to 2,000 members, I think, in that. And people are posting pictures of what they're making oh, at the panels. Oh, that's lovely. So you can really have a discussion stuff. with other members. It's, it's great. It's great. It's so easy to put the pictures on, you know, onto, onto something like that. So the, the designs that I've got on here, up here, yep. Should we yeah, we'll keep the whole four on display? Yeah. That's really, really good. This one here is a variation on the Asanoha pattern or the hemp leaf pattern. You might have seen this, where it's like a continuous pattern of little stars without the hexagon gaps in between but in this version you have these little spaces in between the pattern and I thought that's rather interesting it's one that's actually quite tricky to draw as well so I thought it's nice to give you it as a you know pre-printed pattern so you don't ha have to actually stitch it yourself and then over here we've got this lovely curved line design and this is a variation on a pattern called Shippo which is on the first set of panels but this one's called Maru Shippo. It's called Maru Shippo because it means round Shippo. Shippo means seven treasures, by the way, but it's also thought to be a pun on four directions. And this has certainly got four different directions in it. To stitch this one, you need to do your little circles in the middle separately first. And then all of these curved lines, you don't stitch them as whole circles. You do them as wavy lines going back and forth. So is it easy to work out what order to do things in? It, it is pretty much. Um, yes, yes, I, I would say so. The, the actual stitching sequences for all of them are in the book anyway. Oh, okay. So if, if, so if you've got so my if book, you've got the ultimate you can just, yeah, you can refer to that. Um, the ultimate Shashko source book, it will all give you all the details yes, you need to does, know in there. Yes, it does, because all, all of the things that I've used as block panels on these are in that book. Brilliant. Um, okay. Over here, we have a, a super design. This is absolutely one of my favourites, called Nowaki. It looks sort of like clamshells almost, but it's got these two little bits of grass in it as well. Now, a lot of people, when they first see this, cannot work out how to stitch it. But the easiest way is you start down at the bottom corner, down here, you go up the short bit of grass, and then you strand across the back. And when you strand across the back in any Sashko design, you want to leave a tiny little kind of turning loop almost, like a little sort of smiley or a bracket. Oh, so that it don't doesn't pull the fabric. Yeah, don't pull it tight. Oh, that, okay. that is really, really important. And then you would go down the long piece of grass so and I then over the arc. So you don't use an embroidery hoop then? No, you don't. You don't. Which is why you, you need the you loop. Do, yeah, yeah, you need these little turning loops. And when you've got a sharp change of direction, like at the bottom of these grasses, where they all seem to be growing out at the same point, mm. you need to leave a little loop there, which is almost um, about the amount of, of thread you put into something like a French knot. Okay, yeah, yeah. tiny. Yeah, sort of a little bit, little bit like that. Yeah. yeah, so that, that one's pretty easy. Well, they're all quite easy to do, really, on here. Then over on this side, we've got this wonderful woven design. Now, you see, with this one, I would just, um, I would go back and forth on the section, and then I would skip down to the next one and do the same thing, back and forth. It would look amazing, that done in two or three colours, I think. So we've got some other designs over on the other side. Oh, and I should mention something. Oops before I get caught in that thread there, I about the okay. motifs that are running down the middle of this. These were all taken from an old jacket that I saw that came from Sakata City, um, which is near where I used to live. Whoops, just snip that loose thread off there, so I keep catching it in my finger. Um, these are all off, off this particular jacket, which almost had like a sort of patchwork effect to it, to way, the way that the, the sashko was arranged. I think it's actually stitched on a plaid. Mm. So I thought, well, I'll put these down here. These are actually in the back, towards the back of the, um, the Sashiko book, the Ultimate Sashiko source book, um, where the, there's a section, I think it's about four pages on motifs, and they actually do appear in there, but we've drawn them out for you here. Um, so you've got all of these lovely little designs. So if you've ever bought the book before, you might recognise them. Then you'll recognise them, but <laughs> also the oh great yeah, thing is, is that these are now printed for you. Yeah. So if yeah. you've bought the book, these are printed for you. Yes, if you've you got have these, to mark them. the book will explain everything you need to know. The book so they explains are all the ins and outs. A great yes. combination yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. Each of the panels that we've done, you know, with the geometric designs, each one has got something on it which is very, very obvious. So we've got this design up here. Um, and this, this is meant to represent mist. Well, you just go around the curves from one side to another 
Um, oh, also with Sashka, you don't start in the middle, start at an edge and, and you know, work across. Is that like the fishing nets one? Uh, I'm, ah. I'm looking in the book Well, actually, now. you've jumped ahead because we have that on the first set of panels. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you about that in a oh, moment. I think it's linked yes. mist. Yes, it is. It is. Um, uh, Kasumi Sunagi, I think, is the Japanese name. In the book, I give you the Japanese names for you everything. You have Kasumi Sunagi. Mm. But it, if I start giving the Japanese names for all the designs at the moment, it's going to take. I'm going to be here all day. Um, <laughs> so True. We'll, I'll, I'll just give a little brief description of what they are. We've got one over here, um, which is like little paving blocks. Mm. And so for that one, I, I would stitch the paving blocks kind of like as a grid going back and forth, and then go into the middle and fill in the middles of each one separately. Okay. And you can start and finish with a knot. Ooh. which I, I will show you as well. And there's also a little joining knot. Um, I'll, I'll make sure I demo that too. Then this pattern down here, I think it's absolutely amazing. It, to me, it always looks like little sort of pointy hearts. It's not meant to be, but it looks really cute. And then over here, we have got a lovely hexagon design. And for the, the hexagon... That's lovely, isn't well, it? Well, you, you can do really it. Like you that. can do it in a few different ways. In the book, I stitched across... Um, I sort of did it in rows. It. And this is something else that we did. In, oh, you can possibly hold that up and show them it. At the beginning of each chapter in the book, we've got one piece that we stitched on cream. Yes. Oops, there we go. You, you, do you want to hold that one up for them? Make them sort of see it maybe on the I split screen. I just hold screen. it like that. So there's the one that you've stitched in cream. Yeah, I think it's slightly behind the um, the script on the screen. If you just fudge it over. There we go. Oh, I'm oh, it's that, really that, hard that, going that, different ways. Oh. There well, we go. I've almost managed it. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, now we can see. It. So <laughs> there it is in the cream. Yes, every chapter has one piece I did at the beginning mm. in the cream, which sort of sets the theme for that chapter. And then all the other panels in the chapter are stitched on dark blue. So if I flick over. Mm. But you'll see they've, so you all, know, they've all got a little touch of colour on them. Yes, I think that's really effective because mm -hmm. on this one you've got all white and then you've just got one yeah. yellow one with and a if, red cross. If you read the instructions, the little touch of colour on those is telling you the stitching sequence. So the first line oh. that you stitch on each one is done in red, then it goes into yellow, and I think it's a sort of brownish colour, and then I think the next one might That's be really... Green. Oh, I thought you just put different colours no, in. No, oh, no. It, it's clever. done like as a teaching aid in the book. However, it can look absolutely terrific to stitch them so in with this several different colours. So with this circles one, yes, that's that, that, that is Shippo. That's the seven order treasures. as well. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, uh, the yes, that's very clever, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, it's great. You can use the book to help you stitch the panels. Yeah. It's not absolutely essential, um, you know, to have the book. If you, if you just want to get the panels, you might say, oh, well, I'm going to do all the panels instead, because you will be able to find stuff online about how and to stitch And there's them. the um, grasses one here that you were talking about earlier. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right, and, and again, as you said, you've got the arrows on here, so it really we does have. explain exactly. Yeah. So the book yeah. is... It, it, is an oh 11.99 gosh it's only 11.99 that's amazing and i don't know how you get it for that price um, <laughs> i wish i could <laughs> but it is it's perfect isn't it because yeah. if you if you've never tried shashko it tells you everything you need to know and if you have tried it this has really got everything you need to know hasn't it it, it will really really keep you going the other good thing about it it will act kind of like as a gateway into japanese language books that you come across as well okay. where you know because there's, there's quite a lot of books printed in japanese about sashko but um, never translate into English. Um, but with the help of that book, you'll be able to interpret what you're seeing in the Japanese books. And also, I would recommend getting Google Translate as a phone app as well. You can hover <laughs> it over the page and it will literally read the Japanese wow. for you. Sometimes in a not terribly easy to understand way, but it will do it. Enough to understand yeah. it anyway. Anyway, I've just put another panel out what while we've been is chatting. That one? This is the green. Okay. And I, I do love the green colourway. It's a beautiful colour, and I sometimes feel people overlook this a little bit. I mean, a lot of people it's very green, naturally yeah. go for the indigo and white or cream yeah. look. That is the traditional colour scheme. But nowadays, people are stitching Sashko in all kinds of different colours and with all kinds of different coloured threads. Um, you know, coloured Sashko threads have been available since the 1970s, so it's quite a long-standing tradition. My friends in Japan who taught me Sashko, they use colours. Um, they do some absolutely astonishing Indeed. work. Um, in fact, again, have a look on my blog. I, I keep mentioning the blog, and I should tell you where to actually find it. Yeah, where, I, I've, how I've do got we a find website. The blog? It's just called susanbriscoe.com. And if you go onto that, at the very top of the website, That's there's a little green. thing that just says, click to go to my blog. And you click on that, and you go straight through into the blog. Um, my friend Reiko Domon, this is my ex neighbour in Japan, she has done an That's amazing one. version of, of quilt using this panel where she's actually appliqued 
the motifs, and then she stitched a sashko around it. It has to be seen to be believed. She's an absolute whiz at doing needle turn applique, absolutely incredible. And she has put a piece of fabric in each of these outlines. What she did, she stitched mm. the sashko first. I would have thought that you would, you know, stitch the sashko second so you could get really close up to your applique. But no, Reiko, she did the sashko first, and she's kind of used that as a guideline to help her put her applique pieces that in. That sounds really amazing. It's amazing. Isn't There's it? a picture of it on the blog. Oh, okay. You have, you have to go there and look at it. I'm sorry, it's, it's in Japan. I couldn't bring it into the studio. Um, anyway, I'll talk to you a bit about this one, shall I? Because yes. this, this is the panel she actually used. So is this the, which number is this? This one? is the 2019 one. Okay. So it's, it's out of the original series of panels. Cam on 19, so that's, on 19. that's the one on the screen at the moment, MP9947. Cam on 19. Cam on 19, dark green. Wonderful. Right. So I'll tell you a bit about the designs that are on here. Up here we have a Noshi crest, and that is generally nowadays shown as a bundle of fancy ribbons. So you can really go to town and use different colours for this one. But originally it used to be strips of dried abalone shellfish, and it was put onto gifts as like a, a lucky sort of thing. Nowadays mm. you see it associated with things like weddings, anything to do with good fortune. Um, it's just a lovely design because you can just play about with different colours. And I'm, I'm itching to get onto the blocks that I've cut up as well. There's so much to cover in this hour, it's incredible. Yeah, lucky we've got two. It is lucky that we've got <laughs> two, very, very lucky. And then over here we've got a crane. Um, so I've, I've just finished doing three different versions of him, which I will show you in a moment. So that's your Japanese crane. Down here, we've got a wonderful swirling wave. Then over here, we've got an ivy leaf. And then down the middle, we've got the moon and a cloud. We've got a cherry blossom. We've got Mount Fuji and a little bit of mist. And then down here, these little leaves, that's a bamboo shoot. And okay. it's got that little crinkly, snowflakey thing behind that I have mentioned Snow before, gray. done in miniature. So I'll turn that over now and describe you the other ones on the other side. I had to have maple leaves. I absolutely adore maple. Um, Is that a very Japanese symbol? Absolutely, yeah. It's, um, there's lots and lots of wonderful Japanese maples. And I'm oh, sure, of course, the I'm Japanese sure a lot of maple. I'm thinking Canada, but <laughs> the Japanese maple is a classic tree. And I'm sure it? a lot yeah. of people have got them in their gardens. And, mm, you know, if you want to put true. colour in, go and look at those this time of yeah. year for your colour inspiration. Then over here, we've got three plum blossoms. Well, plum blossoms, they, they come before the cherry blossom in Japan. So around about New Year, well, really the time of Chinese New Year, sort of end of January, beginning of February, that's when plum is in bloom. And there's everything from bright red to bright pink, to right through to the creamy whites. There's all kinds of colours you can get. So you can have a lot of fun with that, doing it in different colours. Then down here, back to the ginkgo leaves. I, I just love the shape of ginkgo leaves. I think they're so pretty. Um, and the, the vivid yellow colour you get in the autumn is... Is that a plant? What's a ginkgo? We have them over here. Ginkgo trees. Oh, okay. oh yeah. yeah. They, oh, they're trees. I've never, they're never trees, seen one. They're trees. They're trees. Um... Where I used to live, I used to live near Wrexham for quite a long time, and we had we actually had them in a supermarket car park there in the old Asda car park at Wrexham. <laughs> so if you go to the Asda in Wrexham, <laughs> oh, unfortunately that one's been demolished; it's been rebuilt. So the trees oh, aren't there so the anymore. the trees have gone. No, the trees oh, have all gone. Shame. But the autumn colour is just <laughs> stunning. It's this wonderful, vivid yellow. You know, oh, it's mm. it's the most gorgeous burst of colour. And then over here, we've got a lovely old gnarled pine tree. Pine is one of the things that represents long life in the same way, actually, that um, the crane represents long life and anything with a hexagon does as well. They've all got little meanings behind okay. them. As I said, I could talk to you for hours I like the way this. a hexagon is a long life. Mm, so all the they are. patchworkers out there. Yeah, it, it, it's because the hexagon is thought to look like the, um, the back of a, a turtle or a tortoise. Mm. And that is associated with long life. Oh, and of course, okay. you get the yeah. pairing of the turtle or tortoise with the crane, which represents long life. Um, yeah, so anything that's got that design on it is a long life design. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then down the middle, we've got three arrow feathers, which gives a nice hint of um, my sort of samurai kind of thing or mm. horseback archery, which is something that's done in Japan. And then down here, we've got a, a Japanese, it's, it's a tachibana. It's a kind of citrus fruit in Japan. So I think I translate that usually as like a Japanese orange blossom. And then we've got this triple comma design here and that is the end of a design if you've ever seen taiko drummers drumming du -dum, du -dum, du -dum, du -dum, you know mm, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not yeah. going to bring one on the show and do that <laughs> um although i have had a go it's the same motif you'll see on the end of the taiko drums and you'll, you'll see it as the crest of a lot of temples as well and then at the bottom we've got a cute little fan so that was the original set i'll fold that away and i'll now show you the original set of the geometrics. So this will be the 19. Yes, it's the 19. one with the 19 in it. Yeah. 
And what colour have you got? Oh, the dark green again. Well, I, I picked dark green. I, I, I just said to my husband, go and grab one out of the back of the van for me. This is so we didn't have to unpack all of yours. Yeah, no, that's fine. So that's GO19 <laughs> in the dark a... green. But yeah. remember, whether you've got GO19 or GO20, mm. they all come in the same six colours. Yeah, they do. The same, the same six colours at the moment. Although um, that might change, but we'll, we'll see. We're talking okay. about doing some other colours as a special. But if you want to buy any of these, they are all on the website below where we are now. Yeah. If you just scroll down yeah, so you can are. have a look at all the colours and all the patterns. And I'd have to say as well, we haven't actually got a huge number of them in stock. Oh, actually. OK. So I would, I would move quick. <laughs> um, this happened last year, actually, when the panels first came out. They were really popular because they're sold internationally. And... Um, Every now and again, we'd have a bit of a glitch getting hold of some of them. I, I, I know Olympus are a little bit low in stock at the moment. We got what we could for the show. So if you want them, get them from here. And uh, once those run out, am I allowed to well, say Well, GO19 Indigo site. is already sold out. That doesn't surprise me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't surprise me at all. Mm. Um, anyway, I'll talk about the designs on here, shall I? Yeah, Next, do. yeah. This one is Chidori. Now, Chidori, they're... Is it plover or plover? How do you say it in English? It's a little bird. I know what you mean, and I don't know. Oh, right, okay. Plover. Well, I think I, th I'd I say think it's plover, a plover, but it isn't probably it? isn't. I'm, I'm not very good at, at, at British bird names. Well, there's, there's two ideas. Either it's an abstract representation of the little bird, or it's the zigzaggy flight that they apparently oh, do. Oh, okay. Now, I'm not quite sure which one it is. One of the two. <laughs> then this one over here is a bamboo fence. And, of course, down here we've got I the classic... That one. Asanoha. That's just so, that is Shashko, isn't it? That's what well, you think Well, it's, it's of what a lot of that. people think of. When, when they first think of Shashko, they tend to think immediately of Asanoha as like the classic design. It's beautiful. It means hemp leaf and it looks like wonderful little stars. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then over here, this is the fishnet pattern you were talking about earlier on. Oh, okay. There it is. I've got some of those stitched, which I'm, I'm going to start rattling through those in a mo because um, I want to get you thinking about threads and things as well. And then in the middle of this one, at the top, we've got one of those Hitomi's Ashi patterns. Right, so yeah. So the one that I showed you right at the start yeah, of the show. Yeah. Then we've got some individual different flowers. We've got a plum blossom, we've got a cherry blossom. And this one down here is a Chinese bell flower, which is a summer flower in Japan. They're usually blue. And I'll turn it over, talk you through the others. Whoops. There we go. This one here, I think I showed you that sewn into a cushion cover. Yes. Um, this yeah. one is Segaiha, which is Ocean Wave, which is a really beautiful It's like design. clamshell patchwork. It does. It? it always reminds me of clamshells, mm. actually. And um, I am sort of itching. I'm itching to have a go at kind of interpreting these panels the same way that Reiko has done hers, with a little piece of applique filling in some of the shapes. Yeah, you could quite easily, couldn't you? Yeah, I've got so many ideas at the moment for just playing around with these. It's, um, it's sort of the, thing, the main thing that's on my brain. <laughs> anyway, um, the one over here with this combination of zigzags and this kind of stepped pattern, this one is called Yamagata, which means mountain shape, and that's actually named the county where I used to live in Japan. Well, they call them prefectures over there. It's like a big county. I lived in Yamagata Prefecture, which is incredibly mountainous. I think something like 70% of Japan is mountains. A, a, an awful lot of it, anyway. Okay. So it's a, a, a wonderful design. Then down here, this one is Bamboo Basket. And this is just straight lines. I've got a couple of those I've stitched up already. I'm going to show you in a mo. Then over here, we have Shippo, the Seven Treasures. You know, on the previous one, you saw the Mari Shippo with the little mm. circles on it and the two lines. Well, this is the simpler version of it as well. It's, it's very interesting because when you start looking at the history of a lot of the patterns that are now in Japan, many of them seem to have come to Japan along the silk route from China. Okay. Well, they jumped from China to Japan, but they got to China along the Silk Route. And this, this design here, I've seen this in Roman mosaics. So some of them actually seem to have gone So they haven't necessarily or originated in Japan. They've no, had influences it, from other cultures. It, it's very, very interesting. When you start looking at Japanese history and design, there have been periods in Japan where they've been very influenced by um, design from China or Korea. And then they've given it a Japanese twist. It's, it's a little bit like, you know, in the West, us saying, well, we have all these, you know, neoclassical country houses, and that's based on Roman things, which were based on Greek things. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, so it's it's a similar kind of, of thing. Well, every way, every culture is influenced by another, and yeah. then they, they pick and choose which yeah, bits of culture they want. Yeah, it's fascinating. And then you know we we interpret things our own way. So the way that you know an English country house doesn't look like 
you know, a, a house in Pompeii, mm. it looks different, but you can see the similarities. Yes. It's a little bit yeah. like that when you really start looking at it. Okay. Down the middle, we've got um, a chrysanthemum up at the top, which I, I was very careful. I didn't give it the same number of petals as the imperial chrysanthemum because you shouldn't really be using that one. Oh, <laughs> and, really? unless, unless, yeah, it, it, it's, it's official one. Oh, okay. And then under here, we've got a little maple leaf on its own. That is something I absolutely adore. These actually, by the way, are all done as very small, oops, I'll get the, I've, I've got the book under here. They're all done as very small motifs mm. in this book, you know. Um, in fact, I just flip past the page that they're all on. So you would see them all. They're all there in this book. Oh, sorry, I put it upside yeah, down, upside down. Sure facing you. Oh, I got so used to having to turn things around for <laughs> I the camera know, all the time I know. So, I so, you know, we've got these designs in the book that you can mm. just enlarge up. Um, and you can see there I did a little coaster with the plum blossom and a coaster there with the, um, sorry, that's the plum blossom. That's the maple leaf. Oh, that's pointing lovely, at the wrong one. It? Oh, and there you can see all those geometric designs, mm. some of those that we've put on the, um, the new um, geometric panel as well. And you've got the selection of the kanji crests. Um, actually, up here, there's, yeah, there's quite a few of the designs that have now ended up on the new panels. There's the iris there, there's the... So really, um, they really do go rice. together very well, they do. Yeah, they do. You, you, the can, you can mix and match and play about with them. This is the little Buddhist manji motif that I was telling you about. It looks a bit like card trick in quilting. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, very, it is. Very, very much. Card trick, you know, is actually a 1970s block. A lot of people oh, think it's a it? traditional one. But it was invented by um, oh, Beth Gutchin, the American quilter. Her, her husband invented that block. Most people think it's trad, but it's not. And I think it was in her perfect patchwork primer. Oh, so just 1970s. It's, wow. Yeah, just 70s. And it it's, looks like a really It's, it's amazing how it? things which are quite recent sort of have, have become traditional in mm. a way in, in people's minds. And then down here, we've got another piece of that Hitomi's Ashi stitched down there. So that's like an introduction to these panels. Um, and you may think, well, the obvious thing is, you know, to stitch them using... Cream or so, white. so far, all of the panels in deep red and indigo are the most popular. That doesn't surprise so me because actually that, that's the trend that we've noticed as well. They're is the ones it? that people seem to go for that's the most. That's the ones that they want the most. Yeah, but I have now grabbed a few extra pieces to show you because this is, this is where I'm sort of coming from today, really. You can stitch them as a complete panel. You can cut them up and make them into something else. If you are going to cut them up and make them something else, Cut them up before you start because it's a lot easier to stitch a small piece than it is on a big piece. <laughs> yes. Makes a lot of sense. And actually, before I leap over onto those, I'll show you what I've done. Because so if you um, finish the edges first yes, before you Yes, this is what I wanted to show you. This, this is the way I tend to do it. I cut my panel up and these are just two chunks out of the middle of one of the black panels. Oops, I'll move it over a bit so you can see it a little bit better. Um, it's fairly obvious on this one because I used a lighter coloured thread. I've gone right round the edges. It's, what I don't have an overlocker. What is that one? Is that the... Um, oh, this is the black. That's the black. That is, these are out of the black geometric 2019 Right, panel. so Geo 19 black. Yeah. They're the, really effective. So I, I cut the middle pieces out of those. I've taken a little bit off there. That was the piece that I was stitching earlier. Okay, so you can earlier. see that on the off. screen now if you want mm. the Geo 19 yeah. black. That's so I so I just edge edge them. The machine I've got it's a Benina and it has this kind of fake overlocking stitch. It's not a true overlock, oh, but it okay. looks like so sort of two stitches forward, two to the side, back again. The Janomis have a similar one, or you can use a narrow zigzag. I just make sure that whatever I'm doing on the edge, that I am right on the edge, so it's not going to fray. And I also make sure that it's less than quarter of an inch wide, because then when I sew it to something else that stitching will be hidden in the yes, seam allowance course, and I won't yeah, see it because yeah. um, I, I don't want it to be on view. So I, I do all my pieces like that. I mean, with this, I could stitch them like this or I could cut them into little squares. I've got a whole load here that I've done. Here's some I did earlier. This is not bunting. <laughs> this is this is bits oh, of okay, sashko as they yeah. come off the machine. And I find when you do the edging, it is far, far easier rather than stitching all the way around one piece to do one side and then go on to the next one, do one side. It stops the corners bunching up. Oh, okay. So it's taken me years to work that one so out. So <laughs> as, you, as you push one through the machine, you get the other one and butt it right up to yeah, it. Yeah, it's like chain piecing yeah, quilting, okay. exactly like that. And so you end up with a little sort of bunting-y sort of thing. Mm. Um, and I must admit now, because my, I did say my workroom is it's absolute chaos. There's so many projects going on at the moment. And I've taken to leaving these strung together like that 
before I actually stitch them and snipping them off one by one. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm quite likely to lose a piece and not know what I've done with it. That's a um, really good but idea. I've, I've got a few more bits down there that are all sort of prepped and ready to go. So I've done the edging on them and then I would start stitching. So the little piece that I've got here, this is that um, bamboo basket design. Oops, it's a loose thread that's very firmly attached there. That is the bamboo basket design. Um, is that just, from Geo 19? It is from Geo 19. That, that is one of the easiest patterns that there is because it's just straight lines. And the yellow lines, the solid sort of yellow ochre lines, I've stitched those first going down. Okay, yep, oh, you like can that. see we're coming in close and then now. That's actually a, a, a multicoloured shaded thread. We haven't even shown the threads yet. We're going to have to try and get those in before. Oh, look at that. You can really see the colours now. now they've yeah, you can see the colour difference in it. Yeah. So I did my verticals first. Yes. And then I did my diagonals. I think we're going to end up doing the stitching demo, you know, in the second show. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I, is I need the, to whisk um, through these. Is the thread all the same thickness in there? Ah, yes, it is. It is all the same thing. It looks a little bit different because the, the shaded one that I've chosen, it's got a dark teal colour and a purple colour which sort of sink into the background oh, a little bit more. The, those lines look slightly thinner, don't they? they it, does, it does give them a different look mm. and I wanted to kind of emphasise that with this. And I'm probably going to use a slightly different coloured thread to go the other way. It's to show that there's like three different sequences to stitch yeah. in it. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's this one. And then... That's it, actually stitched in a circle. Now, we don't have this colourway, I've got to tell you that today. Right, I was going to say, is that the brown, but it is not? It, it, was, it was the brown limited edition that we had last year. OK. And um, we haven't actually reprinted on that colour. It's just done as a sort of an autumn special. But we may be doing something like that again. We're, I'm just talking to Olympus about it at the moment. It's very similar mm -hmm. to the brown, though, isn't it? It's... It's, it would go nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. similar. Similar, but <laughs> different. It's, it's yet a different colourway. Um, the, the reason for this, I just had a fantastic fabric to go with it, which I, I think I totally forgot to bring with me. Um, and it was a very unusual colour combination. And I thought, well, I can use the bright blues and things on this. But what I'm getting round to is I wanted to... Oh, there's one. I'll put this one alongside it. I wanted to make mm. the design look like wow. it was in a circle. So what I did before I started stitching, I just got a circle template. You could use a plate for this. Mm. That would be really easy. And I used a, a white marking pen, um, one that washes out, it's the clover one. And I drew in a circle on the, the piece of fabric. And then okay. I only stitch the sash coat within the circle. So, so the you just get that lovely circular design Yes, left. you do. And then when I, I put this together in one of the samplers, I'm actually going to hand quilt that circle shape. Where you've got a lot of sash coat stitching, the circle is a lot more obvious before it's quilted. You know, just right. have to stitch it. So uh, with the, the hemp leaf design, you can really kind of see the edge of the circle, just ignore the white bits. Um, but this is one where I've rinsed the background out. Oh, okay, yeah, because we haven't seen that. Yeah. Looks. So I'll have to draw my circle on again to do yeah. my hand quilting so I can see where I'm going. And once I've done that, that should give it enough definition. It will look like a circle again. But I thought that was a really nice way. If you want to make the, um, the mm. geometric designs kind of more circular, because let's face it, the, um, the camel crest designs, the, all the ones I've done, they're in circles. So you might think, well, it would look very nice, and I'm alternating on my quilt between a camon crest and a geometric and a camon crest and a geometric. Why don't I make my geometrics circular? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that is a way I to do it. I guess you could make them any shape, couldn't you? Well, you could. You see, you're one step ahead oh, again. So <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got another plan oh, okay. for, for a sampler I want to do, um, and I may be able to get this started for the next time that I come on the show, where I'm actually going to do them and I'm going to turn the blocks into hexagons. Okay, yeah. But more about that later. Long life. Yeah, well, long exactly, life. long life. In many you ways. See, you I've can make hearts, couldn't you? Is, you could is that a Japanese symbol? You could do all sorts. Never well, it certainly them. is these days. You see hearts all over the place. Okay. But I've done exactly the same thing with these. And there's the Yamagata design, but I've washed out the um, marking yes. lines. And this is the Shippo design, but I've left the, you know, I've left the lines in oh, just so you can see yeah, what they look really like. Interesting. As I've been doing these, by the way, I've been taking photographs, um, sort of step-by-step -step photos of all of these so that I could put them on my blog for this sort of mega Sashko stitch-along thing that I've started doing at the moment. Can I whiz through these very, very quickly yes. and introduce Let's our threads? Yes. Yeah? Wonderful. Yeah, go wow. Through, because that will show I us the threads. So we've got, I have got a bundles here. of thread because obviously we've talked about the panels. Yes. But you do need thread to stitch with as well and we've bundled yeah. the threads and... Um, grab some fabric. We've got 
Oh, there it is. Three different packs. You can either buy, we've put them together. Well, Susan's put them together for us <laughs> in collections. So we've got the vintage collection, mm -hmm. which I'll, shall I show you these? I'll yes, show please, them the please threads, do, please do. Show them all the lovely coloured threads. And then you can talk about what they yeah. look like. Yeah. So this is the vintage collection. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten Can I show threads. you what, what inspired it? It was this yes. fabric. So <laughs> Show us, yes, yeah, so Susan has chosen this collection, yeah. inspired by... Oh, sorry, wrong way round again. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll put it the right way up. Um, like a lot of people, I have got a lot of offcuts of interesting old furnishing fabrics knocking about in my sewing room that I've acquired over the years in one way or another. Some have come from things like Quilters Guild um, sales tables. Some of them, I've, I've even picked them up on eBay if you're looking for stuff like this. These are not in print fabrics anymore. But I thought it was a lovely idea for a sampler to use something stunning like this for the middle of the sampler and then start surrounding it with Sashiko Square, sort of like in the manner of a medallion quilt, um, and to take all the thread colours from my piece of fabric. Yes, because they obviously go together beautifully. They do. You'll find if you put that on top of this, it really coordinates. Oh, OK. Well, well, yes, because you've got the mm -hmm. blues that are in... Um, yeah. There's actually tiny touches of pale blue in this. That are in that. And then you've got mm -hmm. the, the orange, which is sort of the and golden colour. And that wonderful colour. autumn colour as well. Lovely variegated yeah. as well. Yeah. So how much thread do you have in each one of these? There's the only 20 metres in each one. But 20 metres. If, if you are doing yeah. these and you're using a mixture of um, different colours, you'll find you won't actually use that much of any one thread. It's well, you only get eight metres in a stranded cotton skein, so... You do, actually, don't you? You don't get very much in that in at all. And then we have another one, which I think was like a pastel kind of colourway. Right, so the, the pastel, pastel colourways, that's... They're in sort of both of these. The bright colourway... I think we do have a pastel one as well, don't we? We, we do, but lots. they are... I have to pick them out from the. Oh, I see. <laughs> Sorry. You see, so you've got the vintage, and yeah. then we've got bright. So right, some, some of them are in both, well. yes. Um, so the pastely one was actually inspired by this fabric, whoops, which has little birds on it. Um, and I'm, so I'm, I'm guessing actually it's the blues and the greens. The blues, the greens. It has some of the pinks in it, so. the pinky shades. Um, yeah, it has that one in it, I think. I think I'm right with this. Um, I think there'll be a picture of these on the website as well, won't there? Yeah. Yeah. If you go on, t if you go on to the website, there will be a picture of the... So you either buy the bundle of mm -hmm. pastel, bright or vintage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which Susan has used her, her vintage fabric collection to choose. Or you can buy them singly. Yeah. So you can also buy them. I'll show you these. Oh, we have the big skeins as well, yeah. They're so you can great. buy them if you just want to... So say you've you bought one of the one panels colour. and mm -hmm. you only want to do them one colour. Yeah. You can buy one of the yeah. big skeins. One skein so of thread's enough for one panel, you know. Yeah, there's 100 metres of thread. If you think, that, yeah, there's enough for one panel. And we've got them in antique white. Mm -hmm. Cream. Cream. It's a light Are they just it's coming up on the... Oh, they're just the coming up on the screen now. There's grey. Light grey. Cream. So then we've got light, light grey. That's this one. So these are two ninety nine for hundred meters. What? And that's enough that to do incredible. one panel. Um, yes, that is enough to do one. What's this panel. one? Ochre. Yeah. That's a lovely yeah. colour, isn't yeah. it? Yes, the yellow ochre is absolutely wonderful. And, and then light like blue. I bet that looks stunning on the it indigo does. as well. Well, it, it it looks lovely in lots of different colours. That one. It's surprising. Well, yeah. you showed it in some mm -hmm. of those brown ones, mm -hmm. didn't you? That yeah. looks really good. So, yeah. and the, you, that's enough for one panel. So you've got yeah, a whole choice if you want to buy. Um, the 100 metres, you can buy them singly or you can buy the packs where you get 10 skeins in, in each pack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can do it in different ways. So show us what they look I like. I will then. sort of whisper a little bit. I'm using the green panels, by the way, with this fabric. Okay, and that's with the pastel. I'm using, yeah, the pastel colours for that one. I'll pop that over there. But then you see, this is the same block. This one's only partly stitched at the moment. I've got the same block here, which mm. I've done using the, the colours to coordinate with the brighter colours. So I've, this is actually um, the pinky one is actually out of one of the shaded threads. I've just very carefully selected which bit I was going to use. I will show you how to open out a thread, by the way, in the next show, because there's a way of doing it. So at 11 o'clock, we're going to do how you stitch, how you 
start. Oh, I thought we were going to do that at 12 o'clock. Are we going to do it at 11? 11. Oh, that's fantastic. Wonderful. No, no, we finished. No. Yes. So we'll have an hour where you can have a break. Yes, of course. Yeah. Sorry, I'm an hour ahead at the moment you are. myself. Yeah. Just yeah, a little not, bit. Not yet. Yes, it's, we're only coming up to 10 o'clock. <laughs> wow. I should look at the clock in here, shouldn't I? And then, so, well, yeah. it's quite nice because you you've given that. us a really good introduction yeah. of the panels, mm -hmm. the colour choices, yep. everything you need. I'll tell you what, I'll whisk through very, very quickly so you can see some of the possibilities that I've done here. I'm keeping an eye now on how much time we've got. That's fine. So, whoops, I'll move it to the proper middle. So the green it's one so I've put down. It's so different, isn't it? When you it is, a it color. is. The green one isn't stitched. And um, this one I've done in the, I've used the hot pink color at the bright set on the black. Mm. Um, all the ones I've done on black, or most of the ones I've done on black, are using the really, really bright colors. And then I've got, I've got this one here, which is the, on the black. And then you see the, the same colours will do different things on different um, different fabrics. Sorry, I'm just realising I'm turning these upside down, aren't I? I can't get my head <laughs> around the idea that we've now got a fantastic overhead camera. That's better. Yes. That's way, way better. So you can see the different how the different colours will look. So um, actually, the, the one on the brown looks a lot more contrasty than it does in real life. It's quite amazing. Um, but you can see the different colours will take on a different look on mm. different fabrics. Um, then I've got... That's an ivy. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? And there's another ivy. That one I haven't stitched yet. There it is on the blue, done in cream. <gasps> so different looks. Whoa, I do like the, the multicolored. Same it's sort of quite neon, isn't it? It on is actually. It's, it's, Maybe it's is it a bit the black vivid. That makes the colour, or is it yeah, the colour? Yeah, it seems that you can throw almost anything onto black or dark blue, and it'll show up really well. Um, you've got to think a little bit more when you come to using some of the other colours. So. I've got maple leaves here. I've got been pink doing. and yellow. Yeah, well, that one's um, that one's a bit fanciful. That colour, <laughs> I must yeah. admit. I've got one here that I'm doing, um, you know, using cream on the blue, and then I've got a sort of natural, sort of springtime kind of look with greens on black. Mm. This one um, I'm doing to go with that fabric I showed you a few moments ago, that sort of pinks and blues and things, and it hasn't got any autumn colours in it at all, so I've got to get creative here. Okay. I'll, I'll use the purpley end of things to represent the, <laughs> the threads there. The other thing you might notice as well, I don't know how well it's showing on TV, but um, some of these I've used the thread double and some of them I've used them single. Oh, when, okay. when you see old sash coats, nearly always done with a double thread. But I think when you're doing something pictorial, it's really nice to vary between using a single thread and a double thread. Oh, so although you use details. all the same thread, you can vary the numbers yes. so that you yeah. get that different yeah. effect. So on this one, you see on brown, I did the outline um, using a doubled thread and I used a single for the leaf veins. So what's special about Shashko thread then? What makes it different to, yeah. say, stranded cotton? Well, or it, it's, it's, it's spun for doing Shashko. It's very tough. Mm. It's mercerised. I've seen the whole production process actually at the company that make it. Although it's top secret, so I'm not allowed to show you the photos. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's it's a very very strong, very tough thread, and mm. it will behave nicely for Sashka. It's got a different kind of twist to pearl it. It's completely matte, by the way. It's not uh, not shiny in any way. Yeah. It's um. So it's, it's yeah. It's not lovely. like pearl. It's not like no. soft cotton. It's not even like cotton abroda. I mean, that's probably its it, closest it's, relative, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, cotton abroda is probably its closest relative, really. It's a it looks a little bit like that, but it's a, it's a bit thicker. This is a medium sashiko thread, by the way. All the stuff we've got there is medium. And mm. um, the stuff in the bigger skeins, yes. that, go that goes through an extra mercerisation process. Mm, so wow. they're actually the same thickness, the, the 100 metre skeins and the 20 yeah. metres. I've just realised we've just gone past the hour, so I'll have to... Um, don't worry, uh, I will don't worry. Oh, wait, I'm going a bit longer, can I? Oh, goody, goody. Yes, it um, does appear slightly thinner. Yeah, but it isn't. It's just because it's... I think they run it through the mercerisation okay. process twice. Mercerising is where they pass the thread through this um, gas flame very, very fast, and it burns up all the fluff. Now, I've, I've said to them at Olympus, why do you do two do, do different kinds of thread? Mm. And uh, they said, well... The non mercerized they think it looks more like old-fashioned thread, and the other stuff looks... It just gives it a different look. So I, I combine the two, you know, all the time. Okay. And I mean, it is, I would say, if you were you're trying to describe it, it's mm -hmm. probably the thickness of six strands, the stranded. Well, this well, one. It's funny to say it's about, it, it's, no, that is actually, it's thinner than a six strand right. cotton altogether. So about four then. Yeah, it's more like about that. It is actually a six ply thread. 
that one there. Okay, yeah, yeah but not strands. It, but it's so not strands because Olympus do a six, they do a six ply and a three ply, and there's also yeah, so it's four non-divisible, which makes it easier. Isn't yeah, you it? don't you don't split it, you don't split it at all. But it does. I would say if you were trying to compare, it, it probably has the feel of cotton abroad is its closest relative. Yeah, it has that sort of feeling to it, but it, it will behave really nicely when you stitch with it. It's, it's actually designed so you can stitch with it doubled. Not all threads will work like that, by the way, I found out to my... So you better, ultimate. if you're going to do Sashko, get the right thread. Get the right thread. <laughs> it's, it's, it, really, it really is the best way to do it. Um, anyway, these, these are my two different ginkgo leaf designs. I hope it doesn't confuse people too much. Um, so I've, I've done them... Oops, I've got the double... I've got the double one done mm. twice and I've got the triple one done four times. So, you know, we've got, got them done in colours, we've got them done in white. I've got all of those there. Plonk those away quickly. I will get through these as quickly as possible because I know you've got other things that you need to do before I come back. Um, and then this one here is the, um, the Noshi Press. And I've done this effect of stitching... Oh, right. I'm not I'm just oh, showing I the ochre oh, one. Oh, you were seeing... Just so the they can one. see the different Yeah, colours. that's... Um, I use the ochre quite a lot, actually, in this. Okay. It's, it's, it's a soft... It's a soft yellow. Oh, that's right. It's not, no, it's not the bright, bright yellow. Oh, that's lovely. So mm. it's really interesting to see the thread and then see actually what yeah, it looks like. Yeah, see what like it looks like. Stitched. The, you know, the background colour does have quite a bit to do with it. Mm. On these two, I've done an effect where... Um, I think this looks nice on a cord. You see a lot of red and white things used together, like two coloured cords decorating things in Japan. So I, I stitch that by sewing all the white stitches first, but skipping every other stitch. Um, I don't think you see on the overhead, can we? Can we get a oh, close-up? Can we get a close-up? If I put it here... Yeah, put it right in the middle. Right there. And Paul you'll really see it on that. will give you an amazing close-up. Oh, close wonderful, up. wonderful. It's so exciting having an overhead camera. Wow. <laughs> it, it opens up completely new possibilities, it doesn't is it, working. really? It is working. It's oh, it's, slow, it's, zooming in, it's zooming in now. And then you That's can wonderful. really, it's nice because then now you mm -hmm. can really show. Yeah, you see that effect there where you've got two wow. different colours. You skip every other stitch. You always think of it as being indigo and white, but it isn't, is it? Well, not like this it isn't. <laughs> no, but isn't it? When <laughs> you come in as close, as close as this, yeah. you can, you can really, see I've got different, wow. I've got different colours in there. So um, you've combined Strands. I have. I have to admit it looks incredibly messy on the back. No, I haven't actually. What, what I did, I stitched the stitches altern alternately. Oh, I see. So it does mean the back oh, end's okay. a bit of a mess, but um, hmm, no one's going to see so that. So you've done them altern and then gone back and... Yeah, and then oh, gone back okay. and filled in the, the stitches in between with the other thread. Then this is the, um, the, the Fuji, the Wisteria, stitched in a touch of colour. Yeah, look, it, now you can see it. Yeah. It's on really close up. Yeah, that one, is the colours really showing up? The, the wisteria is done with a pinky, purpley thread, which we've got, I think, is that it's in the pastel? Pa it's, it's yeah, so this it's one here. Is nope. it that pink nope. thread? No, it's, it's the other one. That, it's that one. The it's variegated. One. Yep. That's in the pastel yeah. collection. Yeah. It's much more vibrant in reality. It is, actually. It looks a little screen, bit washed out it? on the screen. But I also want to show you this, which is just to show you that what you think is going to work well on your fabric <laughs> doesn't always work brilliant in your fabric. Um, oh, it's always good to see where it went Yeah, so where I've, got, wrong. Um, I've got the, green, the two green ones at the top and then I've got these two down at the bottom. And I thought for that green one that that sort of... It's not, sure, it's not actually a thread we've got in any of the packs today, I don't think. That one that's sort of purple through to teal, I used it for doing the... Um, uh, which one? It's on one of it was one on one of the ones I showed you earlier on. It was the bamboo basket one. Okay. It was used on there, and it showed up really well in the black. And I thought, oh, that would be lovely for doing the irises on the green. And I, I used it, and I thought it's not really showing up enough. It really isn't, and that's using it doubled. Um, so I'm actually going to unpick that. And you can probably see I have unpicked already from around this iris down here. Um, See, so, you know, it, it does happen that you don't always pick the right colour thread and you've got to change it. Um, does it re-stitch? I mean, is it right to re-stitch the if fabric? If you, can, if you can very carefully extract your Sashko thread okay. in one piece, yes, you can actually reuse it. And if you haven't gone too far and it hasn't gone too complicated, the easiest way is usually to just snip off the little knot at the beginning okay. and just gently pull the whole thing out. And you'll find that yeah, you can actually recycle it. But I'm afraid for something like that, I'm probably going to have to just snip it off a little bit. But even if you lose the thread, though, you can still stitch oh, it I, I, I can still see the stitch lines there. I might go over that with a marking pencil, though, first, just so okay. I can really, really see them. 
Um, but I, I can still see the stitches. It hasn't actually worn off all of the uh, Does the it uh, matter if you press them before you wash it out? Well, apparently, all that happens is it just makes it a little harder to wash the colour out. You know, the, okay. the white lines, they will still wash out. It's not like, you know, it it's death all them. round and you, you can't do anything with it. Um, I've got these two, the two, the two bats and the moon. So the purple one. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? I like the, the simplicity green. of those, actually. Yeah, I do too. love this. And the, the, the set of Camon crests that we did um, for the 2020 ones, some of them grew out of crests that I did with my Sashiko class at mm. Stockton, where I'd have one of the ladies say, oh, I'm making something for my grandson. He likes this, he likes that. You know, can, can I have a samurai helmet or can I have a, you know, something with a bat on it? He's really into bats. So I, I would look at the relevant crest and then we'd try them out. <laughs> okay. And that's how these ones started out. So you see, I've done my bats in two different colours. So the pinky one, that's actually done with a shaded thread. Um, I think we've got that in the, yeah, we, I can see we have got it in the brights. It's next to the red. Oh, yes, that one. Yeah, that's in the brights pack. Yeah. That's lovely because it's mm. got the light blue and the red and it dark has. blue and it, it, it goes through quite a lot of different colours. All colours. And by sort of being a bit selective about which end of the thread you're using, you can shade from one colour to another. You can have a lot of fun with that. And then, of course, my, my purple and green one there. Um, okay. Whiz, 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 whiz. I know yeah. you're going to have to boot me off in a moment, aren't you, so you can get on with your bits. But I'll just quickly go through these because I've got yeah, so much to do. Yeah, you just quickly show oh, us Oh, I'm going very, very quick. Very, very and quick. And then... There you go. That's a whole load of different the, plum blossoms, uh, different colour combinations. Really beautiful. So in, when you come back at 11 then... Yes. Um, I'll show you the ones I haven't shown you We're yet. going to do how to start, how to stitch. We will. And I'm also so the gonna, technique. I'm also going to show you... And you're going to show... This, which is the beginnings of... Oops, the first of the Sashko. Oh, look, there stitch we go. Along. Paul's already Quilts. taken a picture of that. He one has for already. Us. Oh, he's taken a much better picture than what I've just So that's lovely. So on there. we can talk through how to create we can. that. So we in can. the meantime, it's worth um, having a browse on the website. Have a look at all the 24 panels. Yes. See which ones you want to buy. And remember, we've got the bundles of thread. We've either got the pastels, mm -hmm. the brights, and and the antiques yeah and um, we've also got the single colors by you the have? by the single skein which are is it a thousand meters no it's a hundred hundred <laughs> if it was a thousand it'd be a lot lot yes lot, lot i'm bigger thinking than of that. a spool of thread so yeah. no, thread, it's, not these. It's, so these are hundred meters yeah, it's a hundred meters but it's, it's a heck of a lot of thread that's enough for one panel so it is, it is. and don't forget susan's book as well the, yeah, ultimate, got the ultimate sashko source, sashko book. source book we've also got simple sashko today as which well which will explain everything as well as yeah. simple sashko which are projects eight projects yeah it's, it's more of a project led book the, the simple sashko. yeah there's it, less it, technique in it ultimate sashko source book has um that has got a section of projects as well but with simple sashko it's done more if you just want to like dip your toe in and see if you really like it could be the one to go for but i mean for 6.99 that's it, very good it is actually worth you know but 6.99 for um, this one, and what did we say? What is this Shashko source book? You've got an amazing bargain price today. We have got that at eleven ninety nine. I wish I, I mean, could get it out for that price. That's <laughs> really good. So that's everything you need to know. That's everything yes. you need to make. You've got the panels, you've got the thread, but come back at eleven. Yes, I'll have a look. And break. Susan will be back to show us how to do it. I will, and um, I'll talk you through this as well. Brilliant. It's so okay. very impressed as well. <laughs> I might give it a quick. Well, iron. thanks ever so much. We're going to have um, a quick break now so that we can move off and we're going to have some uh, a change we're going to have some brand new fabrics to go through with you um in the next ooh, 45 minutes rather than an hour so i'll see you in a couple of minutes Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. 
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just six pounds. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. <laughs> so, welcome back. Oh, wasn't that a great hour? Loved seeing what Susan was doing, what she was telling. I'm really looking forward to the next one where she's actually going to show us how to do the shash coat. But anyway, in the meantime, we have got some fabulous fabrics for you. And in the spirit of Susan's Shashko, we're going to start off with some Japanese fabrics. I love these fabrics. I'm going to open these up. Now, these are available. These are new to us. 
these are available by the half meter so remember for anyone who's new to us let me turn around so i can see it um if you want half a meter put number one in your basket if you want a meter put two if you want a meter and a half put three and so on um the code on this one is efyh64 um so if you um if you do buy it by more than the half meter it will be cut as one continuous piece you won't get lots of half meters um this is beautiful fabric this is actually printed is um in japan in the japanese fa um, factories and it's a really lovely quilting weight cotton but it features this metallic thread so you've got mount fuji and it's even got printed on it fuji san which is what the japanese call mount fuji and it's got the traditional crane and all the flowers and then this lovely this so you quite often buy fabrics that have gold metallic in them but this has got a lot of gold metallic but it's very japanese so you can use it just as it is, just as a beautiful fabric, make it, you know, keep it simple, make it into a cushion or a bag or you, you or cut it up, use it for patchwork quilting. Perfect for fussy cutting because there's a lot of detail in it. So say you were doing EPP or a bit of a plique or you were doing, you know, small areas, there's lots of interest in it. You've got the cranes, you've got the um, leaves and the, the smaller sort of chrysanthemums and the different flowers. So, but it is that a beautiful, pure, proper Japanese fabric. I love that one. And it's very, the, all the way, to, I mean, I've, what did I see? I saw somebody who lined just a plain calico tote bag in one of these Japanese fabrics. It just looked amazing because it's very, it's very ornate, it's very sumptuous. And, and um, Japanese, all Japanese prints and fabrics are very in at the moment, very on trend. And this is brand new today. So if you want it, pop it in your basket. £7.49 for half a metre. But, you know, remember, as I said, if you want five metres, put ten in your basket, make yourself a dress. Well, you probably won't need three metres for a dress. Look amazing. You could make my dress. I must remember what the pattern was because I did used to do them. Um, anyway, these four fabrics. Now, these again are Japanese, printed in the Japanese fabric. Now, the only way I can describe them, they, they are similar to a quilting weight cotton. But if you know what bark cloth is. So that's stuff they used to make curtains from in the 70s. I, I love bark cloth. In fact, I made a pinafore in it. And I'm going to show you to start with the back of this fabric. Bear with, bear with. The reason for that is that there's a slub and a weave in this fabric, which gives it a real texture. And you can actually see this better. Can you do a close up for me? Oh, sorry, it's only allowed one zoom. So if I turn it over, Actually, you don't see it as well that way. Hang on, I'm going to turn it around. Wait, there we go. So now you can see on the back, you can see the weave. For some reason, it shows better on the back. But what's lovely about this is that this is quite often sold, although it, as an upholstery weight fabric, it isn't as thick as an upholstery fabric, but it does have that weave and texture to it. And isn't it beautiful? It's got all of these sort of waves and the fish and then this background, as Susan told me earlier, and I'll have to ask her when she comes back on, I can't remember, but the background geometric design is a very traditional Japanese design. So you've got it in this one, which is black, black, but ex exactly, I just couldn't read that. Oh yeah. These are carp. These are, I thought they were, these are carp. Again, it's by the, you can buy it by the half meter. This one is navy. So the fish, the carp, are very similar color, but then you've got this lovely light blue, but just look how intricate that is. And remember, it is, it feels slightly weightier than a quilt and cotton. You can use it in quilting if you want to add some texture, but if you do want to, um, make some cushions or more heavier weight bags, particularly say if you wanted to make a weekend bag, an overnight bag or a backpack, that kind of thing. This is a better weight for it. Um, we've also got it in, what's this, is this called white? This one's called white. There we go. And we've also got it in white. So actually in the white, 
you can really see the print, can't you? You can really see how the wave design and the koi carp. But if I put the three fabrics beside each other now, I've got so much folding up to do. I'm good. I should be here to. I should be here till this evening. Um, but look, now you can see how the three colours don't they go together well? So you know you could buy half a meter of, of each, not even know what you're going to do with it because you know that you will, you will do something with it they're beautiful fabrics and then the fourth fabric in this collection it's that same um i don't know what it's called what they actually i call it bark cloth i don't know what it's called in this um it's got a gray background but it's a mixture of charcoal gray and a slate gray interspersed with the white and then all of the waves are outlined not in a metallic but in a um a sort of a deep golden brown thread. Could you zoom in a bit more, please, Paul? Oh, that's lovely. See, look at that now. You can really see, you can actually, it feels like the fabric's moving. Look, it feels like it's moving. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> that was called trick of the camera, that was. Clever that. Well, it looks like it's moving, doesn't it? But it does. It's the, there is real movement in the fabric, the way that it's been designed. And it does have a lovely weighty feel to it. It's a really nice fabric. But I mean, you know, you can, because it is a similar weight to quilting cotton, you can certainly use this alongside other quilting cottons. You don't only have to use that. But remember, it has got that slight weight to it. But mm, I don't know which one's my favourite, actually. Maybe this blue one. Oh, you've gone really, really quiet, guys. Can't hear you now. And then I'll just fold up the black one. Right, so which one shall we move on to next? Now I can't hear you. Yes. So, should we go for the, which one are we going for? All the greens. <gasps> well, these are lovely. So, this is a mega bundle. One, two, three, four, five. We have got five half metres of these five beautiful shades of green. So, two and a half metres in total. So, you've got bluey sea green it's not as tur it's not turquoise because it hasn't got enough blue in it it's not bright it's called jade but it's like a hmm i wouldn't have called it jade i think it's <laughs> i'd call it kind of an, an aqua a very deep deep mediterranean aqua because jade well i don't know i suppose i think of jade the jewel and it's it's got more blue in it then you've got this shade, what have you called this shade? Fur, yeah, I'd have called that fur. That's a very evergreen shade. This one is more of a emerald. I was going to say that, right. That's an emerald. This one is very lime. And it's called lime. This is great. This is a great guess. I tell you what, have you called this one pistachio? Oh, that's called mint. So I would have called that one. <laughs> that's a very um, pistachio colour. But so for 17.49, you get a half a metre of each of these. Perfect for this time of the year um, with everything going from greens to oranges to brown. So it's a very natural colour, but also think Christmas. The fur and the evergreen are very Christmas. If you want to go more modern Christmas, this lime and pistachio slash mint colour, very in this year. And even these three, you know, you could even split them. Those three work really well together. Those two work really well together. But you get all five of them. Oh, and the stickers have swapped over now. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> we'll swap them over later. They jump these stickers. I don't know which one's which, they just swap over. So that's a fantastic mega bundle. If you like green or you just want to, if you want to add some green fabric 
to your stash. This is a bargain, great way of doing it because we have selected the greens for you. They all go together beautifully. They will mix and match really well with any printed fabric you have as well. So if you've got um, any, you know, sort of larger, more all over print fabric that have got any shades of the green in, then these will go with them. And it's just always useful to have that in your stash, particularly if you're doing this um, small pieces of applique or if you want to bind something or if you're creating a quilt and you want to add some sashing between and binding around the edge. Um, a lovely thing to do when you are binding. You know how it's always really difficult? You think, oh, I don't know what colour binding to put on. What I always do is from maybe half a metre, I'll cut half a metre of four or five different fabrics, join them all together. Remember to join them diagonally and then the seam isn't as bulky and bind your quilt with that. So if you want to bind in green, don't just stick to one green because that's really boring anyway. Join together lots of colours and that's why it's always really useful to have them in your stash. So next, done green, lost the stickers. So we have the what? The stripey fabrics like these. So these are not a bundle. These are individuals. These are really lovely. All I can describe, these are like a shirt. You know how um, men's shirts are always beautiful quality. That's one thing I never do is don't in your hat, don't ever let anyone chuck out any old jeans. Always keep them, but wash them first because they're brilliant for making all sorts of things. And don't ever chuck out men's shirts because for some reason they are made from beautiful quality fabric and these stripes are re are that quality they're rose and hubble i mean it's known for its quality but they it has that if you think of a shirt fabric it has that sort of drape i mean it is a quilting weight cotton certainly use it for your patchwork i bet that's going really funny on the camera isn't it but it does have that smooth feel so the stripes on this are ooh, about about an eighth of an inch I'd say about three or four mils thick. So I'm going to hold it up. This is four pounds. Four pounds. Is that right? Four pounds for half a metre. That's fantastic value. Hmm? Really lovely. Very, very narrow. So I would imagine it's looking a slightly... Oh, it's making my eyes go funny. No, no, I'm just letting the camera go funny. I'm going to fold that one up. Um, that is making my eyes go funny. We've also got exactly the same stripe, but on the pale blue, the code on it is TVLJ60. Um, exactly the same width stripe, but in a pale blue. But this is very men's shirt. So obviously you can use it for your patchwork and quilt in your home makes, but it's great for... Oh, sticker, sticker. It's great for... Um, Men's shirts, ladies' blouses, children's dresses, boys' shirts. It's a real, it's the colour of it. It's very sort of, you know, if you think of girls' dresses in that blue and white school dress, but also of a men's shirt, it really is a pale cornflower blue with a nice bright white behind. But this is perfect for dressmaking. Make a lovely little blouse. I'd make a little short sleeve blouse with that. If it were mine, I would. that's what I'd make with it. It's lovely, isn't it? Really nice fabric. And it is a beautiful weight and quality. It's very smooth. I think, that's, I think they must use it because it feels it's smoother than normal quilting cotton. Now, this one here, exactly the same weight. And the code um, on this one is PRLJ47. So... The blue, it's a very deep navy blue. It's, you know how navy blue, there isn't just one navy blue. You've got very, very dark navy blue, slightly lighter navy blue, more royal navy blue. This is a very dark navy blue. And these stripes are about a centimetre, three-eighths of an inch, that kind of, that kind of width. Um, that's lovely, isn't it? But again, this is perfect for, you can use it in your patchwork and quilting your home makes, but it, it is also ideal for dressmaking shirts. And to be honest, at four pounds for half a metre, this is really, really good value. For the quality of the fabric, you'll know when you've bought it and it drops through your letterbox, how lovely it is. 
but if you need a bit of a stripe for something even you know if you're making dolls clothes particularly the narrow stripe that would look beautiful on dolls clothes you know, need half a meter then wouldn't you but remember if you want more than half a meter put it in your you know if you want a meter and a half put three in your basket but you will be sent it all our fabric is cut to order we don't cut it before you order because we don't want to know what you're going to buy we cut it when you order so you get a continuous piece you won't get three half meters you will get a meter and a half the big box uh, we're not doing that well then so we have these beautiful big box here but that's sold out so I'm not going to show you that um, I have got the PHZW83 box here which is the brights and and I don't know why it's not already open how am I supposed to get into it love these do you know what I love about these is the tin no matter what's in it love the tin it's really, it is sort of called their vintage collection. No, it's called their nostalgic collection. And it does look like a really old, like they would have been sold in 1928. And if I open up the tin, oh, look at that. I love that. You've got eight reels of thread, 100 metres on each rail. Now, this is Gutterman thread. This is your good, qual really quality sewing machine thread. These are 100% polyester. They're the ones that you know, absolute normal weight for patchwork, quilting, sewing, um, top stitching, dressmaking, the, the normal thing, you know, it's not your thicker thread that might be used for heavier top stitch or your lighter thread that might be used for quilting. This is normal sewing machine thread, but we've got them in three different colorways. So that is the brights. Can I open these? Okay. Right, so this one is QRZW49. And the tin is wonderful, isn't it? So once you've used all the thread, that really, I mean, I know that one's called Brights, but it actually ought to be called Rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet and pink. So that's Brights. This one... It's got, an, it's got a different picture on the tin. Actually, I'd want to buy these, uh, buy all three, so I could collect the tins, because the tin lids are different. So this one is pastel. So you've got eight reels of thread for 16 99 And you have 100 metres on each rail, which is a, you know, a really good price. And aren't they beautifully selected? So if you wanted to do any um, springs, stitching or any sort of pale threads and remember you don't have to match your thread to your fabric because quite often you you know with seams yes you do but if you're doing any sort of top stitching or anything where you might seam use a different thread just stitch a bit slower so that you get your seam straight or draw your seam on in advance with one of our amazing early bird pens that I use all the time um, then you can do nice neat top stitching but these are beautiful and that's my favorite color I can't even describe that. It's blue and it's green and it's mint all at the same time. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, and then the final box. This one is PEZW43. I've got to take, I've got to have to take this one out as well. Oh, I know. I've got to unstick the sellotape and everything. Right. Oh, look, and you get a different picture on that one as well. So that's a lady stitching. Right, and this one is, ready, 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 ready? Ta-da! Ah, so that must be, I was going to go your basic collection, but it's classic, isn't it? You've got black, white, toop, which is like a beige, chocolate brown, pale slate grey, olive green, navy blue, and proper cardinal red. So those are all the colours you need, aren't they, for most things. Grey goes with everything. So when you're sewing anything like rainbow and you have no idea what colour to use, you use grey. Blue's for your jeans. Black's for taking up your trousers. White's for anything that you think about. Brown is where you've got to hem someone's cords. And red just goes with everything, doesn't it? So those are your basic collection. And they come in the tins. So if you bought all three of them, you get three different tins. Aren't they lovely? And I won't mess... 
I won't mix up the lids, although actually it does show a, a picture of the lid on the box, so I can't mix them up too much. Anyway, eight reels of thread, really good quality, good to the thread. You don't really need to say too much about that. Everyone knows what great quality it is. Oh, I use Gutterman thread, just saying. Just saying. Right, can we do um, tartan fabric next or denim? Denim. So, <coughs> we've got two colours of denim for you today. We've got a dark denim and a light denim. And we're going to start with the dark one. If the label falls off, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a me yes a medium to heavy weight denim this is trying to help to describe it's not as thick as your jeans or a denim skirt it's not as thick as your jeans but it's thicker than like a chambray or heavyweight cotton fabric so it's if I was going to make a pinafore, I'd use this because it's got a bit of a bit of weight to it, but it hasn't got that stiffness. You know the heavier weight denims where they really are stiff, which is great for a pair of jeans. But if I was going to make a jacket or a denim skirt, and in particular something like a pinafore, I would use this. But remember, denim is brilliant for patchwork and bag making. This is why I, in the beginning, remember I said don't ever throw out shirts, don't ever throw out jeans. I use a lot of jeans for if I've maybe got a beautiful piece of fabric that I like and if you want to edge it I've got a, a bag that I always use and I've got a lovely piece of stitching in the centre and then I've bordered it with denim. Denim is just one of those fabrics that goes with everything so this because it's that sort of weight it isn't your really really thick stuff it's it's got enough weight that you can do dressmaking with it particularly pinafores and skirts but it's also got the weight for bags as well. So if you were making um, a wash bag I made one of those dop wash bags, you know, that's sort of slightly cubed in denim, ju just this way. It looked really lovely. And this is the sort of thing where you need to pinch something from your stash to line. So if you line it with something, you know, like this Japanese fabric, I mean, those two fabrics pair beautifully together. So you buy half a metre of the denim, half a metre of that, you've got two wash bags. Anyway, just a thought, just a thought. So next, exactly the same, oh, I hate folding fabric, I hate folding fabric, as you can see. Um, next, we've got the light blue denim, exactly the same weight as the other one. I'm going to smack the sticker on. Um, so what is the width of this? Because I feel this is wider. Look, my arms are only just... This, oh, this is 145. I knew it wasn't a 44 inch, you know. Just going to just get it. This is 57 inches wide. So that's a really good width. So you can, no, it can't be 499. Really? That, okay. That is um, a very inexpensive purchase can say inexpensive 4.99 for half a meter and honestly this is this weight is perfectly good enough for making a skirt or a pinafore probably wouldn't make a pair of jeans with it but what you could do is you could make if you were making like wide legs you know like when you make those linen trousers that are slightly loose and flowing it isn't a flow it's not a flowing fabric but it's not a you know the really heavy denim but you could certainly make maybe three quarter length jeans or skirts but for 4.99 and actually doesn't that look nice with that stripy fabric but it actually looks quite nice with this stripy fabric as well doesn't it they go really well together i think they pair really well if you wanted to bind the denim this um this stripe would look lovely as a binding maybe if you were making a bag and you wanted to put a zip insert or a pocket that would be lovely because this cotton fabric is 4.99 a meter as well are we on is this like inexpensive fabric hour or something? I don't know. That's very strange, isn't it? So, but I do think, um, I don't think we've done 4 99 for denim fabric. That's a very, very good price. Get it while you can, is what I would say. Right. 
we're going to move to tartan because I really like this. Oh, look at that. That's one that was opened earlier, so I don't need to touch this. Now, what's lovely about this, this tartan pack, you've got four fat quarters, which are 18. Are these American fat quarters? 54 by 45. Yes, so they are sort of... No, American fat quarters are 18 by 22 because they cut them as half a yard, whereas English fat quarters are 20 by 22 because we cut them as half a metre. It's all very complicated. Um, so these are English ones. So you get four fat quarters, but these aren't printed tartans. Oh, no. These are a woven tartan. These are proper woven tartan, as you can see, because they're the same on the back and the front. This one is um, brushed. It's really soft. Now, what is surprising about these is that they are 100% polyester because I would have said they were definitely 100% cotton. So I'm really surprised about that. But maybe that's what gives that a softness. But then this one is much, isn't a brushed, it's, it, it is just like pure cotton. But um, do you know what, they wouldn't crease, would they? Yes, you could make, um, you could join lots of them together and make yourself a pair of trousers. But they would, no, I mean, I would use, well, you put them in your stash, you use them for linings, for outers, bags, purses. Um, you could use them for dolls, clothes. So many people, I've seen loads of you on Facebook lately who've been making some really lovely dress dolls and teddies. These are perfect, aren't they? But let's think Christmas as well. Say you want to make some um, little bags, um, Christmas table, you want to make some little um, table presents, you could make some small drawstring bags, put a little bag of chocolate coins and a little gift. That's great, you could make crackers. Each one of these you could make, I think, yeah, they're more than big enough for a napkin, each one of these fat quarters. So if you bought a pack, you've got four napkins. Actually, you could cut a bit off the edge and have it to the napkin ring. So if you bought two of these packs, you've then got eight um, tartan napkins and they all go together really well. But because they're polyester as well, won't they wash well? But really lovely. But just think Christmas. You know, I, if I was you, I'd stick a couple of these in your basket because they are um, perfect, for, especially for your last minute Christmas makes. Or if you're going to go really eco this year, wrap your presents in them. You see, so say you bought somebody um, this lovely tin of threads. You know, what you do, you only need half one of these, don't you? You wrap it up in your fabric tie it together with a ribbon and then whoever you give this to and what you do you see because you can't use sellotape you just fold the ends in like that and lovely piece of ribbon we do a little present wrapping workshop there we go and then you piece of string now you'd have to have a nice bit of string on that I'd use some garden twine and then you've got a double present haven't you <gasps> should we do should we do present wrapping right so I'll just pop those there. <laughs> nice folding. Did you like that folding? Um, this fabric, this is um, amazing, amazing. This is um, Lewis and Irene fabric called Hot Chocolate and <laughs> Sniffer Vision. It actually smells like chocolate. I'd like to have a go at pressing this because, um, you know, when you press stuff, it really smells more. I've, I've just bought myself a wool pressing mat. Oh, if you've never had a wool pressing mat. I did put it on the um, Sewing Street fan page that I was going to buy one. I had loads of you that came back and went, yes, yes, definitely buy one. They're brilliant. They're brilliant. So I bought myself one. And it smells like a wet sheep. I absolutely love it. So I, um, so whenever you press, it smells. So this hot, this hot chocolate, it really, really smells. But it doesn't smell of chocolate, it smells of a hot chocolate drink, that kind of creamy milkiness. Anyway, we've got two, two colourways. This fabric is available by the half metre. Um, this one is called pink. So it's got, it's not a bright pink, it really is a chocolate, a, mm, yeah, it's like dusty, chocolate colour pinkish 
It's really hard to describe. Have you ever had a strawberry hot chocolate? That's the colour it is. Have you never had a strawberry hot? So lovely. So it's a brow, it's a chocolate mixed with a pink colour. It's a very dusky, dusky, light dusky pink. And on it, you've got all these little hot chocolates and gingerbread men as well. And that one's got a little um, wafer sticking in it. And then there's little hearts. That This is very seasonal, isn't it? This is hot chocolate time of the year. Actually, I was quite pleased this morning when I was driving in. My car beeped because it was going below four degrees. I thought, yes, bring on autumn. Oh, well, do you know what? The, summer, the summer's gone, hasn't it? We know that the summer's gone, so bring it on. I'm looking forward to lighting the fire, putting my hat and scarf on. You know, I hate that in between where you don't know whether oh, is it hot, is it not? Let's just, let's just bring on autumn. Bring on autumn. And then this fabric is exactly the same as the other one, but this one is called Plum. And it's um, it's got exactly the same motifs on, but I would say that the background, is, yeah, is a stewed plum sort of colour, but not as purpley as that. More a browner plum colour. But if you want something to smell of chocolate, you want to make some little makes with it, or you can buy this by the half metre. Oh, wouldn't it be great? Make yourself a blouse and that. Imagine wafting into a room, going, so, smell me, smell me. But it's just clever, clever. I like it, and it does really smell nice. And um, I was, who was, well, I was on air with somebody the other day, and they'd been using it, and they said their house actually smelt of chocolate. That was with Delphine, and she said, and someone came in her house and said, your house smells like really sweet, like she'd been baking, but it was the hot chocolate. So, that's all the fabric for now. Um, do buy the denim, that's my top tip for this hour, because that is really good value, and you can use it for loads of things. And the Japanese fabrics, those are my favourite. Um, so, anyway, we've got Susan coming up in just a few minutes' time. Um... We're going to go a bit early to it because it's only 11 minutes to 11. Um, just so we can give some more time because she's going to show us how to do it. So during the break, have a quick whiz through the website. You will need the book and you will need one of the panels and you'll need some thread and some, you'll need some needles as well. If you get that all out of the way, get it in your basket and then you can sit back and enjoy Susan who is going to show us how to be masters of Shashko. So see you in just a few minutes time. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433.
Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is health habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. So welcome back. Oh, we've got Susan back. We've just been having a chat about jeans because I really want to have a go at Shashko on jeans because I've seen people do and I've seen it on Instagram. It looks so cool. But I'm going to learn how to do it on this first. I've seen it done so many times, so I'm really looking forward to this. So um, just as a quick recap, remember that we have two books. Well, actually, we've got more than two books. We had two books by um, Susan. We've got the Ultimate Shashko book, which gives you everything you need to know. So if you've never done Shashko before, it will give you everything you know. It's the Ultimate Shashko source book, eleven ninety nine, which is a great price. And I did have a copy, but I've lost it. But never mind. Oh, no, I haven't. Sorry, sorry. Panic over. Panic over. I found it again. So we talked about this in the last hour, and this tells you everything you need to know about Shashko. So if you, if you haven't tried it before, then that's what you need. We've also got the other book by Susan. is a simple Shashko book which is eight projects. So this is your sort of encyclopedia of everything you need to know. This is your project book. So this sort of explains, but there is technique in the project book and there are projects in the source book, but that's the sort of the balance of them. Um, we've also got lots of panels, 24 different panels that Susan has designed. There's so many of them. There are four different designs, each come in six colorways. If you have a look on the website, just scroll through, you'll see all of the different panels. Um, Susan went through all of them in the nine o'clock hour, so you can always watch back if you want to see some more detail about that. We've also got bundles of thread. You can either buy them as mixed bundles. There's a Brights bundle, a Vin pastel bundle and vintage. Antique, not Antique, vintage. Antique bundle is the other one. Yeah. Or you can buy the threads as individually, individual colours. Um, 100 metres in each of these. And there's an ochre, white, cream, grey and blue. We've got all of those. 
and obviously we've got needles as well. Shashko needles are special and I'm going to get Susan to tell you why they're special but we do stock those as well. But we've also bought in these stripe fabrics which um, Susan recommended to us because she uses them. So these are Japanese fabrics aren't they? Yes, yes they are. They're made by the same company that make the panels. Right. Olympus. So Olympus, who mm. make all the panels, and they're yarn dyed as well. Um, they're not. They're not print. Yeah, they're not print. <laughs> they're a, a bit like dyed. that tartan I was just showing you. They're yarn dyed, so they're woven. They're not. They're not. I showed the um, uh, cushion panel earlier yes. on. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't exactly the same stripe. That was actually um, a slightly earlier one, but it's that type of fabric. I use it a lot for things like um, bordering cushions. And I've also used it a bit where I've started putting this Sashko Sampler quilt top together, which I'll come back to in a mm. moment. Um, I, so I got a bit carried away with that and I thought I'll have a look and see if I can make the stripes run along the sashing pieces. Okay. Yeah. So we've got <laughs> this in one, two, three, we've got this in five different colourways. Shima Momen, that's what it's Shima called. Shima Momen, yeah. I don't know, yeah. am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, Shimomen. yeah. Yeah, Momen is cotton, Shima is stripe. It's just me striped cotton. <laughs> it's just you know, me striped cotton. I love that. Yeah, simple as that. So there yes. are different colourways. You've like, you've got this sort of blue that's got a rust in it. You've mm -hmm. got a green with a blue in it. A purple with a like a burnt orange, mustard with charcoal grey, and a very this is like berries, like a deep berry. Yeah, that's that's the one I've used actually on my piece, but I've made the stripes oh, okay. one in the other direction. <laughs> yeah, so that's like um, a deep berry with a plum, yeah, isn't it? It is. It's a very it is. It's, it's sort of an autumnal fruit. It's quite fruity. Yes. That one. Um, the autumn. I don't know what it's called. I don't know if you've actually got different. I, I just call them by the. Um, but it should be the, called the autumnal numbers. fruit. Well, it should have had a name. Yeah, but it, it, it's yummy that one. It's got that real sort of berry purple in it. Yeah, but it the, is. Isn't the it? berry purple is also in the one that has a slightly russety. Um, I in this one, describe slightly burnt orange. It's with that as well. The, the other, the thing that's different between the two is the slightly burnt orange one. I think has got more yellowy colour in the narrow stripe and in the berry sort of one mm. it's more like a, a green it's more in the green it's got a very very narrow stripe it's got a different it's a really unusual it. fabric though mm -hmm. and you don't it have is. to you know if you don't want to use it for shashko for bordering it you don't have to you can use it for all sorts oh, it's of lovely. things it's got quite a nice it's weight strong. to it isn't it yeah yeah it Slightly has it, has. It's, it feels it's a bit weightier than it's the heavier than normal quilting fabric but i find it's fine enough that you can piece with it in quite a fine way okay you, know, you can do quite detailed piecing with it yeah but dress I use making, it a lot. You can make a nice dress out of that. Well, it would, but you'd need more than half a metre. We'll have, we'll have oh, to see about but we sell it by we'll the half metre, you see. So if you want a metre and a half, you just put three in your basket. Oh, right, it comes to continuous piece. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, OK. It makes me feel a lot more comfortable than where I used it on this sample here. Yeah. Yeah, you just you decide. Would, you would need longer pieces for if that. If you wanted more, yes. you just put more in them. Because all of our fabric is cut right. to order. Right, right. Oh, get that's good. That, that's, that's fine. I was a little bit worried with some of the half metre pieces. It's OK. But it's yeah, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's an unusual fabric. I really like it. But it it has that real um, Japanese quality. You can do some very interesting things it? with stripes, which I'll, I will talk to you actually on this little piece bit here. And I know you're itching to start stitching. Start really. start technique. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a few bits of threads here, and I've also got I've got the same needles that we've got for sale. Right. Too. So tell us about the Shashko. Yeah, needles. the Sashko needles. The ones we've got for you today are the clover needles, which are some of my favourite ones, I have to admit. Um, and we've got packs of eight, and in the pack of eight, you get four different sizes. If you just lay them on the desk, oh, if I lay them down, facing and you, can see, you. Yeah, you see, I always forget we can do this now. Just just this fabulous new overhead camera. Yeah, they'll just yeah, come into them. Um, there you go. It's eight different needles in two different sizes. So in theory, I suppose, you could share a pack with a friend. No. <laughs> no, I, 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 I wouldn't. I keep more for me. Um, there are two very, very tiny needles, and those are really good with finer Sashko threads. I tend to go for one of the six with the longer Just eyes if I'm using the medium. Move it over a bit. Ooh, move it over. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Is it kept with them? Yep, with there, with there. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. There they are. The thing that's different about them is Sashko needles are very, very stiff. They do some sort of um, 
special tempering of the steel when they made the needles. So they don't bend when you stitch with them and they are really sharp. Sometimes people using one for the first time are kind of fooled a little bit. Always oh, got a big eye, it must be like a cross stitch needle. No, you can give yourself a bit of a jab with them if you're not oh, careful. Really? Yeah, but uh, they, they don't bend. They seem to last for ages. They don't seem to develop rust, which is quite amazing. These ones have got gold plated ends on them as well. So you can see where the needle eye is. So it makes it a lot easier for for stitching with them, you know, to actually get them threaded. And you also want to know about how to open out the Sashko thread. So I thought I'll talk you through all of that with two different blocks here. And also the question about jeans. Yes. About, about stitching Sashko in your mm. jeans. Actually, should we deal with that now? Because I might, I might forget if I do <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> is that a traditional thing or is that just what us in the Western it's world... It's modern, have? it's modern. But a lot of Japanese people are doing it. It just looks it's, cool. It's, it's one of those sort of wonderful little cultural hybrids, really. Um, my friend Reiko has made a stunning pair of jeans and I think she, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's her, she said to me what, what you do to make it easier to stitch on them, you open up one of the seams on the jeans. So I'm just thinking now I've, I've got a pair of jeggings on. The, it'd be the inner seam. It, it'd be, yeah, usually it's the... The outer one has got the... Don't, yeah, bit. don't open up the seam that's got the top stitching on it. It's yeah, the other one. The, the, the outer other one, seam, the yeah. inside leg, isn't um, it? Just open that seam up so you're then working on it flat. Okay. So that's good. The other thing is... Don't try and do it on a pair of stretch jeans that stretch a lot <laughs> across the width because yes. you'll find after you've done your sash cut, unless you've just done diagonal lines, um, it won't have any stretch anymore. You could of do course. vertical lines and you could do diagonal lines. That'll have a bit of give to it. But if you do uh, something where you're stitching back and forth ac across the thigh, suddenly oh, it won't, it won't stretch. Um, this is very interesting, actually, because I've, I've, I've just finished working on a new book which is called The Book of Borrow, and we're hoping to bring that on the show as well. Mm -hmm. And like the Borrow King in our household when it comes to jeans is my husband. And he has done Borrow pieces. It, borrow is a kind of way of, of patching and reusing fabrics and things. I'll, it's, it's all something for another show. Okay. But I know one of the pairs of jeans that he's done are actually stretch jeans. So what he did, he did curved lines instead because they're more flexible. Okay. It's a long story. I promise to bring the jeans when I do that. When yes, we launch. please Look, I'm do. hoping we'll be able to come down... Um, the book's not out till November, but I'm okay. hoping we'll be able to come down and do a show then. That would and be I, lovely. I promise I will bring his jeans. Please. I will. Yeah. Yeah. So, I've got some thread. So, where do we start then? Where do we begin? Well, I thought I'll, I'll start by showing you how to open out a skein of thread, because it's not like um, six-strand embroidery thread, you know. It's, it's more like perlé. You know, when you open a skein of perlé, it's all tied yes. together in one place. So, you can't just take hold of it and just pull. But the Sashko thread, um, I've got one right here. I'm just undoing it at the moment. Um, I'm not actually going to stitch with this one. I'm going to stitch with one of those two because they're, they're the threads I want to use these blocks. But I just thought, well, I'll open out another, another thread that's a different colour. This is actually in the antique pack. Okay. Mm, it's yummy, yummy, yummy colour, that one. It's like autumn leaves. It's actually one I designed for Olympus. All oh, right, there's, and, the, um, um, there's the graphic on the screen oh, if you want to buy it. The yeah, thread. that is in the antique pack. Anyway, what you find when you open okay. it out wow. is... Do, 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 where am I? Carefully. Carefully. There you go. That is what I was looking for. That little bit there, which is all tied together with like a little knot. And that's the place where I want to cut through my thread. It looks a bit savage, this, actually, when you do it. <gasps> there you go. I'll just get rid of that knot. <laughs> yeah, that does look a bit savvy. Uh, it I was a bit scared it looks terrible, that. really. But the thing is, you'll now find that those threads are just the right length for stitching Sashka. If you're going to be using it double, they're perfect. If you want to use it singly, you could cut them in half. I've just got in the habit of using really, really, really <laughs> long threads. <laughs> like you have um, thread you yeah. need, like I do. Um, the, the method of, of stitching, the, the unshin method of stitching, um, I do like a little bit of a hybrid, really, between that and um, the way that we stitch in the West. Because when you stitch unshin, you have uh, a special thimble that sits in the palm of your hand, mm. and you hold the sashko needle back against that. And it's a very odd movement if you're not used to stitching that way. Or you have another kind of thimble, which is like a, on your knuckle, and then you have to stitch with your knuckle folded down in the palm of your hand like that. And mm. that feels weird as well. But you know, you can stitch sashko doing the pleating action without having to have the back end of the needle balanced on one of those thimbles. It is possible to do that, and that's the way that I like to work. So I didn't rip the band off. I've kept that for a very good reason, because I want to thread my thread back through the band okay. and keep it together, because then when I want to order some more, I know that is number, that's shade number 93. I've got right. the ID on it, and I know, and I know okay. what it is. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a clue. 
Um, well, as you can see, this is the very glamorous way that I keep my sash kids for heads, <laughs> usually stuffed into Ziploc plastic bags. Mm. Um, I tend to recycle bags that things have, have come in, you know, and um, I'm always recycling packaging. And I just keep them like that so I can see what's in the bag, because if I put them in a box, I wouldn't have a clue what was there. So as you can imagine, my workroom, there's packs of bags sitting around like that for different projects. So now I've got, um, I've got my thread threaded through. I'm going to split it more or less into three. And I'm just going to put it in a loose plait. This isn't a very precise three, by the way. And this is the kind of thing, if you've got somebody else to hold the other end of the thread, it's very useful. But with all the social distancing rules, I can't lure you over here to do that. We would be a bit too close. So you can always loop it around something. I'm just putting it in a loose thread. It doesn't have to be, sorry, loose plait. It doesn't have to be a particularly fantastic plait, but it will just keep it quite tidy. Oh, OK. That's a really good idea, isn't it? Yeah. And then what it, well, will It's happen? a good way of s storing any... Oh skein yeah, any, like any skein thread, it's very good. The only thing you'll find is that some skeins are, are wound, they're a little bit on the short side, so they would be long enough for, you know, stitching with a single thread. I mean, if you did this to a, a skein of normal embroidery perla, you'll find that the threads, the cut threads will be about that length, uh, rather than okay. doubled. It's, it's just the way that they're, they're wound. But with the Sashko ones, they're, they're made for Sashko, so they, they look like that. So once you've got it into a plait, you can then Here's one I prepared earlier, <laughs> as they say. Um, you can then get your plait and just get hold of, of the thread like that and pull it out from the loopy end and That's it'll come amazing. out. That's amazing. They should sell them like that. <laughs> it would take a lot of handwork to do all the plaiting, yeah, I think, really. You know. So although, as I said before, platting. my thread bags look a bit chaotic, when you actually get inside, you'll find that they're all put in little plaits like that. Brilliant. So it's, uh, it's quite a good way of doing it. And I'll just... I'm going to choose one of the bigger needles out of here. Whoops, when I can get it open. Sorry, I'm rustling plastic So there's four now. different... Yeah, there's four different sizes, and I'm going to go for one of the longer ones. So depending on whether you're using one or two strands? Yeah, the, the two teeny-weeny ones on this really are best with fine sashiko thread. Um, or you could use cotton abroad or something like that. Um, and I, I tend to keep those, and when I'm doing the borrow where you've got multiple layers of patches, and I'm okay. generally using a finer thread. But as I said, more about that when I come on a show, hopefully, in November. Um, yes. It's a bit of a tease, isn't it? I have actually set up a, a Facebook group, you know, called The Book of Borrow. So the if people want to join so that... So I presume borrow is a Japanese technique? Well, not... <laughs> it's, it's a funny thing. Borrow literally means rag or tatter mm. or something worthless junk. It doesn't actually have to be something that's, that's stitched. But nowadays, people are using the term very much to describe the, the Japanese rag cloths or boromono. Anyway, I've written a whole history section about it. I don't want to bore you about it today. But um, it's kind of absorbing. But it's, it, in a way, the stitching, a lot of the stitching is so random, it's almost like the complete antithesis of Sashko, where you're stitching a pattern. Mm. Yeah, come, come back in November. Yeah. Come back in November. <laughs> okay. and I'll tell you all about it. I'll, I'll have the book, I'll have the jeans and everything. So you threaded the needle. So I threaded the needle. I'm going to stitch with this doubled. So I've just, while I've been talking to you, I've just been playing about and smoothing the thread down. I've got the two, the two ends are kind of together there. And you can see that. I've just smoothed it down a bit. And I'm going to start and finish with a knot. And there's also a very small joining knot as well that I can do, which I'll show you. I have done it on previous shows. I think I did it in February when I came then. Um, anyway, there, there we go. And you can also do this. Snap it a couple of times. And that seems to get all the extra twist out. And it looks interesting. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I guess so why not got, do they it? need to stay <coughs> nice and straight in line. Yeah, you're, each you're just other. trying to get any extra twist out of it. And the thing is, the sashko thread, it's it's made for doing sashko. So Funnily enough. It'll, it'll behave. Mm. It'll behave really nicely for you. So I'm going to use this to do some of the straight lines on this. <coughs> now, admittedly, if I, was, if I was starting, if I was doing this just at home, I'd probably start with the first one in the corner there and then do the next one, the next one, the next one. And I'll start and finish each of the knot. But because I'm going to demo how to stitch and pleat the fabric onto the tip of the needle and get lots of stitches on, I'm going to go for a long line rather than start at this corner mm -hmm. and just work my way out. And I thought it would be rather nice to have this thread going this way across this fabric because I've, I've got the solid yellow ochre colour going up and down. I've got another thread going here which has got purple and teal and a touch of yellow ochre in it, a bit of cream. And this one is just like green and yellow ochre. And I thought it would, it would look very nice to have a different thread for each direction mm. in the pattern. Traditionally, it would be done all in white or cream. But I, I just want to have fun with it, you know. And uh, so I'm going to start here. Now, if you can manage to get away without um, 
bringing your needle all the way through to the front. If you can just work just with the tip of the needle sticking up, like I've got just there. I don't know if you can see that, folks. Yeah. yeah. I think something screen that. Yeah. If you manage to work like that, it will stop your first stitch from twisting. But if you can't, don't worry because you can sort your, your first stitch out later on. So I'm just going to pleat these stitches on. Yeah, can you get in a bit tighter, please, Paul? Oh, yes, please, if you could do that. That's, that's fab. Tight, I'm just, please, Paul. Just make sure I'm in a nice position. There, there, that feels nice and natural. <laughs> I'm not leaning over the table too far and hiding everything. No, you're fine. You can see everything. I love this overhead camera. It's a great feature of the new <laughs> studio. I'm really, really in love with it. There we go. Things I can't actually watch what's showing on the monitor while I'm stitching. No, see that's what I mean. true. But can can you see? Yes, can you no, see if what's you look happening? on the monitor, you can see. Oh right, look right. At that. It's like I'm trying to look in two directions at once. Yeah, don't, don't. Right, okay. I won't look in two directions at once. I will just look down at what I'm doing, and I'll get on with pleating. <laughs> and I'm just using the little dashed line you see as a guide. Okay. Doing this also stops your stitches from sort of slewing from side to side. So you're not using a side. thimble or anything. You just hold. I'm not. I'm just holding the needle. But as you can see, the oh, needle yeah. isn't really moving. Okay. I'm kind of moving the fabric onto the tip of the needle, like that, kind of pleating it on, with a kind of a bit of an up-down sort of motion. Yeah, so it's, yes, look, if you, right, hold it still now, because if you look on the monitor, you can now see. Mm-hmm, and that's, up. Oh, yeah, that's and really good. And then down, and then up, and down, and up. So you're actually almost like just picking up a tiny bit, but you're moving the fabric. I'm moving the fabric onto the needle, yeah. Not the needle, yeah, because normally yeah, if you I'm do hand quilting, yeah. the, ne the fabric stays still. It does. And the needle rocks. Yeah, and if you're, if you're doing hand quilting and you had it on a frame or in a hoop or something yeah. like that, you'd probably get about four or five stitches on it, and you'd, you're probably doing that technique where you've got the two thimbles as well. Yeah, I can do it with one thimble, not uh, two, just one. Oh, I, I went on a really brilliant course with a wonderful tutor called Sandy Lush, and... She's a really expert hand quilter. She does a lot of Welsh quilting and it was amazing. And I did another course, oh, I think I did one before. Before I, I had a course with Sandy, I went on a course with um, Gwen Vi Rees Griffiths from North Wales and she's another expert hand quilter. And it's, it's quite a stunning technique. I can do it, but it's not my favourite way of stitching. <laughs> I really like hand quilting. I was taught by Barbara Cheney. Oh, um, she's fantastic. Who is amazing. Yes, yes. The best yes. thing she taught me was there are no stitch police. Do whatever you want. Love yeah, that. Yeah. Love that. Remember that forever. But she taught me how to do it. And I love she's hand great. quilting. I love a machine quilt. But that's a really completely opposite <laughs> to hand quilting. It is. It's, I it's, like it's that. a different way of doing it. But now the thing is, you, you might not realise, but I've actually got the whole line on the needle. Well, you have, I was just watching you thinking, you haven't pulled that needle through no, at I haven't all. Pulled so it how through. many stitches do you think you've got on there? Quite a lot, quite a lot. Um, oops. But the needles are long. The needles are long, so you can so do this trick with a long line. Now, what I'm doing, I'm sort of wiggling. Is it difficult to pull all the way through when you No, I'm running? not actually really pulling the needle through. I'm kind of wiggling the fabric off the back end right, of the needle. Right, okay. So, whoops. And I've just managed to pull another thread a bit there when I was doing that. But uh, there we go. So now, that's what it looks like. Should we have another, <laughs> have another overhead shot? Overhead Oops. shot, please. Overhead shot, please. Overhead shot, please. Please. Oh, super. Can you see? It looks all yes. sort of scrunched up. It does. Yeah, because I've gathered the whole thing up. And what I'm going to do now is start very gently easing it out. This is very much like the manoeuvre of getting um, gathers yeah. out of curtains. Um, is Will the thread break if you're not careful with this? Mum well, no, it's as tough as old boots. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Well, the number of times I've tried to gather something. <laughs> You're going to laugh about this. The number of times we've been at shows and we've had to tie something up and it's like, has anyone got a bit of string? No, but I've got some sash coat thread. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah, you'd be you amazed. Know, if, you've, um, if you've done a running it's stitch tough. with normal machine thread and it always breaks, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it, it, this would If wouldn't. you're gathering, but that doesn't. That is one thing. Do not, do not ever try to break sash coat thread with your fingers because you just won't do it. Oh, you can't just go... <laughs> no. no, no, it's... Challenge. Yeah, challenge. It's, it's quite amazing. So what I'm doing now, I'm just gently easing it all out. So I suppose you've got to make sure that it's completely flat now. That yes. Best way to do that is stick it down the table. That isn't completely flat yet. I'm going to give it a little tweak here, ease it out a bit more. You so you're obviously an expert and you can get a whole line. Well, I've been doing it for a long time. As a beginner, how many would we be expecting to get on? Get as many as you can. Just that, that, would be, that would be okay. And the, the thing is, you'll find that when you start stitching again, sometimes you might get a little twist in the thread. The, the other thing about stitching with... Um, these shaded threads, you can quite distinctly see in some of these stitches, if you, if you zoom in, probably can we can get a close-up, please, Paul? Can we get close to that? 
This is great. <laughs> wow. You, you can actually see... We'll call him Close Up Paul. Ooh, there we go. You can actually oh, yeah. see the, um, the two threads sitting side by side in the stitch. You don't want them twisting. You want them doing that. Yes. Okay. So if you start off properly and you've snapped them and <clears> that will help. Like, that will help. But it's also the stitching action that you're doing. If you keep going in and out, in and out individually, you'll find that it'll keep twisting up on you, which isn't great. But if you have found a twist in it, the easiest way to get rid of the twist is gather it up again. Oh. <laughs> Ease it out again, and you'll find. I mean, there wasn't any twist on that, but you'd find the twist would disappear. Same thing if you've got a twist magic. on your first stitch. It is, it is magic, magic. If you've got a twist on your first stitch, pull back on the little knotty bit. Whoops. There, so mm. I've left that dang there. Good and job the thread's so strong. Ease it, it the other way. Yeah, just don't scrape it with your fingernails because you can fluff it up. A okay. Bit, but just do it. It like, is quite, do sort of it has a rough feel fingers. to it anyway, doesn't it? It's sort of soft feel. It has, it has a different feeling to yeah, like the I'm threads that we use that here. Yeah, it's like a strand um, of cotton. It's now, I'm going to show you something not to do, OK? <laughs> this is on a bit of a bias because it's on a 60 degree angle. Do not kind of really, really, really stretch it like that. You see what's happened? Yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe if I hold it a bit like that. It's gone all wobbly and the threads are standing up too much. They're, they're sort of standing like little mm. loops and it looks really uneven. But don't worry, if you have done that, to make it go right again, all you've got to do is gather it up, ease it out again, Whoops. But don't go quite so crazy on the easing out. Just do it gently. And then you'll find it's absolutely perfect. It's just, just how you want it. So how do you know when to use two threads and when to use one? Or do you just experiment? Well, you experiment a little bit. As I said before, if you look at most old pieces of Sashka, you will see that they're done with two threads. Oh, and I just finished off with a little knot on the back. I just did it by... I'll sort of demo it again. Oh, I, yeah. did, I did that without thinking. <laughs> yeah, um, sure, sure. Yeah. You just wrap the, the thread around the needle once like that, stick your thumb on it, pull it through. Do it's we need to get a close-up of this, Ooh, do you think? Maybe we do. Yeah, maybe that would we be do. Nice. I, I've already got a knot there, by the way, so I'm not going to do finish off the pulling through bit. Oh, look at that. But you just wrap it round. It's a bit like doing a French knot, but not going through. Yeah, OK. And stick your thumb on it, pull the needle through. I'm not going to do it again because I've already tied one knot. I, I just did it automatically without thinking. OK, so you just Sorry. wrap it round and pull it yeah, through. Yeah, you just wrap it round, pull it through. And then what? Do you, and then you just cut off? Yeah, just cut it off and oh. leave that little tail on the back. Well, you're not going to see all of this lot. It's going to be inside the quilt. True. When you, you've worked. You see, traditionally, sash coat is not done through wadding. That, that is not a, a trad thing at all. And uh, it's sometimes done through more than one layer. So if you wanted to quilt it, yes. you don't quilt it as such. Not at this stage, you're doing I don't. It. No. But if what? you were doing it as a quilt, would you put wadding and a backing fabric like you normally layer a quilt and then just shashko it? That's what I did with that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't actually got a huge amount of quilting on this yet, but my, my plans are I want to go round each but, of yes, the motifs, I mean, so you see. Do you quilt it afterwards or do you yes, your I would shashko quilt, your quilting? I would quilt it afterwards, right. right next to it. It will sort of give the impression a little bit that the sashko is actually doing the job of Can doing the quilting. Can you use shashko to quilt? You could, but it's hard work. Right. I've done it on a few That's things. Okay. And you have to be really careful about the wadding that you choose because you, you want to have a wadding that isn't too dense. Yeah. So I, I've, I've tried it. I've tried it with um, very fine cotton waddings, very, very lightweight ones that were quite open. In fact, the, on the book cover on here, that Do you want to turn it round? Oh, yes, turn it round, because so you can see it that way, can't you? I was holding it up to <laughs> no, no, I only know it because I'm watching it on the screen. I do all of this. Screen. Oh, brilliant, thank you. Um, there's two cushions on the front cover, and actually the one that's on the right-hand side mm. has got a very fine wadding in it. Um, and it's one that's got, it's got like a fan design on it. I'll tell you what, I'll open the book and I'll show you, because we've probably got a better picture somewhere. Is it towards? The, no, it's, there, there we go. That is the cushion. And I used a fine sashiko thread doubled to do the fan. That was a four-ply sashiko thread. Mm. And then I used, it was actually, it's the light, it's like shaded blue. We've got one of those packs. I can't remember which one. I used that singly to do this pattern in the background. But what I found was even using a wadding that was quite easy to stitch through, and it, you know, it's a hand quilting wadding, it's a very lightweight one, um, it was hard work. It was really hard work. And I couldn't really do that pleating action. The minute you put wadding in, it sort yeah. of stops you doing it. And when you look at old pieces of Sashka, you find that the pieces that they've got the fanciest designs on are usually just done through one layer. Okay. So incorporating the patchwork and quilting, I, I think generally it's better to stitch the Sashka as embroidery. 
and then right. to do okay. your patchwork and then to put a wad in, in and then I'll go it. with you I'll yeah. go with that then yeah yeah and I tried it I, I tend to hand quilt I have actually got a piece with me I've left it out in the main um, mm. office though where I machine quilted around it but it was a small piece and I did it with the walking foot because my free motion quilting is not good enough to be able to stitch next to a line like you know a curve or something like that and not wobble over my stitches yeah. I, I just could not do it um, so yeah I, I tend to go for hand quilting right next to it and with this fabric having a black thread in every different color if you use black thread for your quilting it's completely invisible <gasps> Wow, that's it just, brilliant. Yeah, and you, it it just, just go next to your, your sashko stitching. So I've shown you a little bit yeah. on the straight, and I thought I'd show you a bit on a curve as well. Yeah, do, yeah? do. On this one, okay. super duper. Um, this is the plum blossom design, so I've got another colour that I'm stitching this with. So is this, this is in this the... this is our pastels um, pack, actually. What pack is this one I in? this one's in the pastels one. No, the... Oh, the panel. Oh, the panel. This is the green one, and it's one of the new panels. It's a 2020 green. I don't know if we're going to get it up on screen. 2020, come on. Come on. Oh, yes, come, come on. on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Yes, come on. 2020, yeah. come mm -hmm. on, green. Come on in the green. I'm <laughs> the specs on again to be able to see to, to do this. There we go. So I'm just. We just have to remember because you. Otherwise, when if you're watching, you think, "Oh, I want to buy that one." You've got to remember, so that. Oh yeah, I I should be mentioning all the different colours. That That's the black one. That's it's the on green. screen at the moment. Yes. So this this one that I I just did here, um, in the black, that was the geometric from the 2019 Please. set. <laughs> but and it this, is all on the website. You can just scroll it is. down. You, and you, you can look at them all there. All, you can so. see all the different designs that are on them. Yeah. So I'm just going to do this. I'll do this with a double thread as well because I do love the effect of the double thread. I'm just going to a little snap like that. There we go. Tie a little knot in the end. It's just a single knot. If I'm using a single thread, by the way, I tend to wrap that knot twice mm. rather than do it. If I just do a single knot with that and a single thread, you could pull it through the fabric all the way through right. if you weren't careful. So um, I've done it like that. And for this design, you see, I've got a curve on this, but it's surprising on a gentle curve, yeah. you can actually get a lot of stitches on. If I'm even doing more, well, not so much even more, but I can probably get quite a long way around that curve. Okay. If I'm doing a tighter curve, like in the middle, I can't get, I'll tell you what, I'll do the tighter one first. Oh, I see, because you're pleating it, it's how many you can get on to get actually around the curve, whereas in straight lines it you can get on is, more. It is a bit, yeah, yeah. And if the curve's tight, oops, you can't really get um, all the way around it. There we go. So I'll probably only get three or four stitches on here at any one time now. There we go. It's quite novel being able to see myself like that. Isn't it? See what my hands are doing. There we go. Like Should we zoom in on this one? You could do, you could do oh, a little zoom. Yeah, Actually, I'm, su look at that. I'm, su I'm surprised myself just how far I'm getting round. No, this. but it's quite interesting. <laughs> when you come in really close like this, you can actually see. See how what far I'm you've seeing. Got you know, th this is one of the things that has been a bit mind boggling. Since the whole lockdown thing started, I came with this genius idea that I will start doing little videos and things. Um, and so I got myself um, a little clamp thing to stick my phone on, and I've got a little lapel mic and all that kind of thing. But trying to actually set it up at home mm. so that the camera is seeing what you oh, are seeing is surprisingly tricky. Um, I'm working on it. <laughs> so I've said to people you know, who, who are following this as a, a, a sampler stitch along on my um, blog, I said, watch, watch the TV show because you'll get all the professional shots that I can't do yeah. at home. It is really hard though, isn't it? It, it is, it is quite tricky, yeah. But, I've actually um, I pulled that all the way through. I actually come through at the right side then as well. But you see, we've got Paul, you see. Oh, no, it's, it's wonderful. Brilliant it's wonderful. At close and now, you see, I'm easing the stitching out. There we go. And they're all lying nice and That's parallel. That's really stunning in the yeah. bright pink. Is it harder to ease out the pleats when you're on a curve? Yes, a little bit more. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, yes and no. Um, it's a little bit harder. It takes a little bit more of a wiggle. But on the other hand, you're nearly always slightly on the bias, and that will help you. Oh, OK. The fabric's a bit more stretchy that way. Um, yeah, so 
in some ways it's it's a bit harder, in some ways it isn't. I've just taken a few stitches out right. Oh, it hasn't really twist. I was trying to make a twist on this one here, and it hasn't really twisted up. But it has got a slight bit of a twist on, so on this. So the gaps between the stitches aren't the same length. No, as no, the they're, they're smaller. They're so smaller. that's the difference. Yeah. I was thinking because with running stitch, the gaps. Yes, it's, it's, it is not equal. Right, is it about <laughs> half? Of um, it is. It is approximately half okay. the length of the stitch. Somewhere between a half the and two thirds. Just, it just depends. Yeah. On here, yeah. it is about half, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Well, what what I was trying to do there <laughs> was get a little bit of a twist in one of the stitches. That this stitch here, that I've just stuck my needle back through yeah. to try and point out which one it is. This is where I started off stitching again. It's got a very slight twist to it, not much of one, but I can get rid of that by just easing it up again and easing it out again. So if you do start getting those twists, that will get it's rid brilliant. of it. It's, it's and brilliant then you'll find to be able to learn from what from your years of practice. Because that's yeah. probably taken you a while to Well, it took me it took me a long time to work out that this was really quite important. Yeah. Um, when I first started doing Sashka and I first started stitching Sashka, I wasn't really that fussy about telling people, you know, to pleat the fabric on the tip of the needle, blah, blah, blah. And I realised actually it does make a difference. It really does make a difference. Okay. I realised before I wrote the book, thank goodness. But in the very, <laughs> in the very, very early days, I think the very first time mm. I taught a class, I kept thinking, why are those stitches twisting and mine are not? And I sort of analysed what I did, and um, you know, I found out then it was okay. So you see, a design like this, I, I, I would go right round that middle, and then we get back to this point here. I can then go off and stitch around there and then come back to the middle, and then I can strand across here on the back, go up and down that little piece there. So how long can you there. strand for? I don't tend to push it anywhere more than about an inch, okay. really. I don't want much more than that on the back. Um, I could show you, oh, that's, that's handy, I've got this Here's one. Here's one I did earlier. Here's one I did so earlier. So when we say strand, we mean trail your thread across the yeah, back of the work. Yeah, that's what you're doing, yeah. yeah. Not, not a big loopy trail. It's, it's more like, if you think of like the shape of like a smiley or a little bracket, you know, a curved <laughs> okay. bracket, yeah. about that much is what you want. Right. I've done this one a little bit differently because I decided with this one I would do the middle with yellow and I've used single in the middle and then I've used that hot pink colour which is in the, in the bright mm. thread pack that we've got there. I've used that to go around the outside. Oh, that's lovely, that one. And I've used that doubled, which is why mm. it looks a little bit bolder. So the thing is, when, when you're stitching um, yes, geometric... Yes, that actually looks so much brighter. You've picked up a different pink. Is that the different one? I think I think we've got the hot pink. Have we got the hot pink there? I hope we have. Mm. No, we I haven't. haven't. Oh, well, we unless haven't. it's red. We've got the, the red's very similar. Maybe it was out of stock when we okay. ordered that pack. But at any rate... Um, no, it's a different, it's a different it looks, one because that's the red. Yeah, I can't come scuttling over and point it out for you. Uh, no, these are the only pinks. Th there's, dif there's different pinks. There are so many different shades, actually. Oh, uh, OK. Us. Yeah. But you get a very similar effect, actually, right. with that, that deep with that red. that one there. In fact, more about that in a moment because I've used the two together on the, the piece that I started putting together here. But I'll explain a bit more about that later on. But when I turn this over, you can see what it's doing on the back. Um, now, you can see these places here where I've joined a thread in on a line. And that is a little knot called a Hatamasubi or a loom knot. Um, I'm not very good at knots, I should tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rubbish at knots. I was a girl guide, but I don't think I ever got my knot badge. So I started thinking, you know, if I can learn how to do that, anybody could learn how to do that knot. So um, I think what I will do, I will pretend that I've run out of thread with this on the back. And uh, what I'm going to do is come through to the back. You can keep stitching, you know, until you've got almost no thread left if you want to do that little knot, because you can tie it with less than an inch. There you go. I'm just snipped that bit off. Right, that's in the middle. There. I don't know, can we can we see that? Yeah, I just left a, a okay. little dinky bit there. Yeah. Right, and this is how we're gonna knot. So imagine now I have got a new thread. I know it's only the bit left over from my previous one, mm. but I've got a new thread here. And I've got the two ends of that thread and I've got the two ends of this thread. You can do this as a single thread, you can also use it to join a single and a double together, which can okay. be handy in places. So I'm going to put the new thread. Have we got a good close up? Oh, super. Do Look at that. Right. That's oh, lovely. that's excellent. Right. The new thread is going down to the right of the old one. And you can see I've got my thumb and my first finger on top. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, apologies if my nails don't look great. I was doing DIY all last week in the <laughs> house. So uh, we're building a veranda on the back, actually. Right. So here's the new end and there's the old end. And I've got my thumb on my first finger so that when the, the new end goes down, I can hold it like that. I've got it now. I'm sort, of, I'm sort of doing this. Oops. 
scissoring those two fingers together on my left hand, okay? And then I'm going to fold the old end over. So okay. the old end is crossed over the new end yeah. now. And then all the rest of the work really is done with this bit of thread. I'm not holding the needle. The needle, the needle folks, whoops, the needle mm. is over there. Upshot, because if I do try and hold the needle, I find that my hand is so busy holding the needle, I can't tie the knot. <laughs> so I, I lay the thread like that over my thumb. Yeah, now yep. that really needs to be under my thumb, not on top of it, it needs to be underneath. So if you lift your thumb up and put it down again quick like that, you can go underneath that's the new end sticking up there mm. and over the old end. And as soon as I went underneath the old, the new end, I put my finger back in place again to hold it. Because as soon as you go underneath, this thread is trying to flick it up, you know, trying to flick up that little end. Yes. So I'm underneath that one. I'm going to go over the old one. So that's what it looks like now. I'll just move that away a little bit so you can see a bit of a gap there. Yeah, yeah it's no, cross. So it's underneath that one, over that mm. one. And then you take the old one and you bend it through the loop. This is why your old thread doesn't want to be too long. If that's three inches long, it's going to be very difficult to get it to thread through that little loop. And you don't want to make your loop too small either. But you just flick that in through the loop, bring your thumb, whoops, get in there, bring your thumb up underneath the loop, hold it like that. So I'm hanging on to both those little ends. This is why I need my thumb, oh, sorry, my thumb and my first finger on top. If I only had my thumb on top, I wouldn't be able to hold this little end here, you see, and keep it in place. And then you just pull on this thread and it closes the knot up. That's amazing. I think it's, um, is it a bowline? It, it's, it's like some sailing knot that I cannot do so for life. So is that really it's strong? Different. That is incredibly strong. And the thing is, you may think it feels a little bit bumpy just after you've tied it, but the remarkable thing is it's actually quite a flat knot. Okay. And once you've stitched, it's hard to find it in a piece of finished sashko where there's, there's one or two on the back. On the, I found one there. By the time it's got wadding in it, you won't feel it yeah, at true. all. But that's a brilliant um, tip for just ordinary embroidery. Because, you know, you get to the end mm -hmm. of a thread and then you sometimes don't want to finish it off. So you have to actually yeah. thread the needle through and then re-thread mm -hmm. it. But if well, you so had a knot to join in. Yeah. So, well, it's, it's a weaver's knot. That's what we would call it. Um, in Japanese, it's, it's called a hata musubi. Musubi just means a knot or a bow. I think I'll be watching that back on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Rewind. So well, that's, the, that's the thing, you know, do, do <laughs> look at that bit again on mm. YouTube and you can see how it's all done. And I think I demoed it actually back in February as well when I was on one of the very Brilliant. first shows. But, you know, you, you've got to not mind your sashiko looking like that on the back. There is a way of starting and finishing Sashko where you stitch back on yourself as well. So we've I got a question from Denise. Oh yes. So she's a beginner, what's yep. the best pattern to start off with? I would I would go with one of the geometric panels. Okay. Definitely. And I would start out with one of the really easy designs of the geometric panels, such as well, the one that I've got here, right. the um, the bamboo fence design. That is really, really simple one to do. And I would work your way up from that. Okay. That's so really that's, that's, that's a good advice. That is the simple answer. So that's um, Geo 19. Yeah, so. another great design. The um, oh, the Shippo design that's on that one, which is like the interlocked circles one. Mm. Um, that is really really easy to do as well. In fact, that's one I often do in a beginners class. So yes, there are there are easier ones to do. And in the book, in the um, Ultimate Sashko book, we we actually ordered the. Um, I'll put it open here. We, we did the running order for the pattern directory in this book, so it starts with the really easy stuff. Oh, okay, so if you're a beginner, get the book yes, and yeah. just start at the beginning. Yes, start there, start <laughs> there. That. And in each chapter, we start with the easiest pattern in that chapter. And, we and because you've done, like you ones. said in the previous hour, the colours denote the order. They do in this one, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it, it sort of surprised me actually when a lot of people first started getting the book, people were saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm putting the touches of colouring on mine as well. I was like, well, I just did it because it's a teaching sample. <laughs> um, but th the reason I did it, I'll, I'll get to the pattern in the end. Where are we? There we go. Hemp leaf. Beautiful now, one. When I was first learning Sashko, I really could not figure this one out and I kept stitching myself into a corner. And it wasn't until I saw a, a sample that had been made by my Sashko teacher, Sashko teacher, where she'd stitched it in colour, that the penny suddenly dropped, and then I thought, oh, that's how it's done. Wow. Oh, I so I thought, right, I'm going to take that idea and 
I'm going to adapt it to all of these, which of course then meant when I did the book, I had to restitch every sample that I had. But it makes perfect sense, <laughs> doesn't it? Because it's probably the only way to see what order it's in. It is. It's, it's, it's very, very useful. It's like a, a learning sort of thing if you want mm. to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. But, Brilliant. you know, since then I, I've used touches of colour just to sort of highlight the different patterns. It, it depends what your purpose of it is, really. Yeah. You know, if, if you were, say, doing, you know, Sashko and it was for, I don't know, City and Guilds, um, patchwork and quilting and you, it was some of your samples or whatever, then putting the, the colour in, like I've done in here, would actually be very good because you're sort of showing what you can mm. do and it's, it's, it's sampling. But there again, you know, if you're doing a, a cushion, you might think, well, actually, I don't really want to look like that. But on the other hand, it might look good with two different colours in it. And you know, why not play? Why not play? But it's nice to see that although you've done it in colour for the purpose of teaching, it's yes. really nice to see how the colour works. Yeah, it, it does. It, it looks good. It looks really, really nice. Um, so that mm. is sort of the basic bits, really, of, of doing a sashiko stitching. And after that, I'm afraid to say an awful lot of it's just practice. practice so you've practice. got... 12 minutes left. I have got 12 what minutes left. What is the most important 12 minutes that we would that you'd like to show us? <laughs> well, I'd like to show you some more colourway ideas okay. in this. So it gives you ideas how you can use different yeah, colours. Yeah, no, that's really... So, I mean, so basically I what show you've this. shown us, you do exactly that, but you've just got to get it in the right order. Yes, yeah. And I'm also going to show you the start of the Sashko Stitch Along sampler Fantastic. that I've got here and tell you not to do what I did last night with it, but <laughs> okay. yeah, well, yesterday afternoon, we'll actually. Yeah, so we're gonna go, I'm going to go very, very quickly now and show you the colour effects you can get. I mean, just bear in mind are this one. Are they the right way? Are they oh, no, they should be facing me. They were oh. going upside down. Thank you for prompting me. No, I wasn't I will sure, because I can't... <laughs> but as I look on the screen, I can't see yeah. sort of from the side know, which way up they are. Right, I'm just going to oh, whiz through beautiful. these very quickly. This is the crane. Now, the and crane... what's that one from? This is actually off the first panel set from the 2019 Cam On set. Twen Cam On 2019. Yes. Yeah. Right, they'll put the graphics on in a minute. Oh, so. wonderful. It's just to show you the different colourways because obviously the quilt that's hanging behind me, that has got the crane on it somewhere. Oh dear, it's down. I'll have to hold it up. Can I just hold this up? It's okay. I always forget that some bits are dangling down behind the table here. Oh, There's yes, the crane you see in the middle of that. Um, I don't know why I put it towards the bottom of that quilt. I should have put it towards the top because it's always been a very popular design, that one. Um, one that my students have always wanted to do quite a lot of. So for it's these, <laughs> I went and looked at a proper picture of a Japanese crane. I realised that actually not all the feathers are white, you know, because the, the neck is black and the tail feathers and the feathers at the back of the wing are also black. And I thought, well, how am I going to explain that mm. in a piece of sashiko where it's like sort of negative and positive... Um, you know, how am I going to do it? So I decided for my black one, I would use a, a shaded grey, you see, oh, to do yeah, the back of the tail feathers and also this little bit round mm. here with the neck. And then with these two, I used the same shade of grey on the brown. It doesn't have as much definition on there, but after I've added a little bit of hand quilting and I've got wadding behind it, it'll throw it into a bit more three dimension. I think it will work. And then for this one on the green, I thought, right, I'm going to go completely fantastic. So I've used purple, <laughs> which is a little bit different. It does look really lovely, mm. doesn't it? Because it doesn't look sort of too bright and in your face. It's quite no. subtle, but it, it adds that little bit of interest yeah. and depth to the design as I well. I realised when I was I working like with that. the pastels, I would have to be a sort of bit fanciful, if you like, you know, as to yeah, true. which colours I used. Now, this one is from the 2020 Camon set. And you've got the, um, the rice sheaf done in a bright golden yellow, which you've got in the bright pack. And I've got one here where I've used oh, the yellow ochre. Actually, the yellow ochre is the same one that we've got in the 100 metre as well. You know, we're, we're doing those at like a really special price today. I hadn't realised. <laughs> really? Probably giving them away. Yeah, they've got the thread. Yeah. I know. Oh, yes. Yeah, we did absolutely. Question it. it's, it's a huge bargain price today on that. 2 for 100 metres. Yes. That, mm. You are almost giving the stuff away. Yes, I would get it today because so, you may not get it that. Well, I'm okay. afraid you wouldn't get it from me at that price. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that, it's that a really, lovely it really colour, is though. insane. It is a beautiful it's, soft um, colour. It is like it's like Dijon mustard. It is. It's exactly like Dijon mustard. It and is. the other one is a real goldeny colour. So I thought, yeah, well, it's I'll not do ochre, it's Dijon I'll mustard. I'll do them a little bit different. And Which another I'll thing, take it out. I don't know if you might notice this actually on, on this go. panel here, but you know, sometimes you don't have to stitch every single thing that's on that's printed on the panel. So I thought for this one, you see, over here. I don't know if we can zoom in a little bit. Underneath the bit where I've done the red and white, um, it's for that cord effect, there's actually a little row of stitches there. I'm just running my finger along there. 
Look at, I don't think it's, oh, wow, this, this zoom's amazing. That's very good. Yeah. He's very Which good, sort of like finishes off the end of each piece of rice straw before it goes into the bundle. Okay. Right. I stitched them on that and of course they're marked on the panel. It's that little curve there and that little curve there. And then when I stitch this one over here on the green, if we can zip over the green and zoom in a bit, which I move the green over a little bit. Oh yeah, just move over That might help. Oh, you're brilliant at this now. I'm getting the hang of it. Yeah, move <laughs> it over a little bit more. You'll so notice on middle. here, on this Perfect. one, yeah, yeah, I didn't stitch those stitches because I thought, well, you look at it and visually, because the sort of the, the string or ribbon or whatever that's mm. holding it together is, is going round just above it. That sort of finishes off the ends. Do yeah. I really need to stitch that? So I left that little bit out as an experiment. And I'll just see how it looks when it's all... I really like the wheat sheaf, though, because it looks so detailed. It really looks like wheat it's, well, growing, it's, doesn't it? It's actually, it's actually rice. Oh, it's rice. <laughs> it's rice. It's Japan. It's rice. <laughs> it looks like um, like a wheat sheaf, doesn't it? It does. I it don't does. Think I've ever seen a rice I've, plant. It, it looks almost exactly the same as a wheat sheaf, actually. Oh, is it? So uh, yeah, but it ah. is that is rice. The area that I used to uh, work in when I was there as an English teacher is a big rice growing area. So uh, and then we've got these four here, where I've actually used the same. I haven't stitched the blue one yet, but I've used the same. Um, oh, I've got that on its side. I've used the same shaded blue colour, which I think we've got in the antique pack, and I've used that to stitch the inside of the waves on each of these. It's like so that's a shaded, in the and that that Cam is that's a 2019 design. Good at this now. Yeah, you're getting you're is getting really really good. But you see, you can mix them all up. This is the, the lovely yes, thing about it. Yes, I think I want more than one pack. <laughs> and I've given them a slightly different look because this one has got the um, the white as the like the crest of the waves. This mm. one has got the cream as the crest of the waves, and this one um, is the same colours actually, the, the green is the same colour as the brown for the threads. But the thing that's a little bit different is instead of taking a, a cream thread all the way around the outside, I've done that in the blue, so it gives it a different look. Completely. Even though the threads yeah. are the same threads between the two. Um, so there's just, there's just those Yeah, the two. sort of weight of it changes. Chuck, that, chuck those away over I'm here. I'm glad you've spent all the time doing all of these. Oh, they're so having loads else. of fun. So that everyone else can go, yeah, I'm going to do that then. <laughs> loads and loads. Well, these, these are just another load of the, um, the different geometric ones where I've used two different colours on them. And yeah, that's that's that sort of yellow ochre colour and that shaded one I was just using there. I think everyone will have to watch this back frame by frame on YouTube. I think you might go, have to, actually. I would say do do watch it again on YouTube. If well, you've because got YouTube, you've done you've all the, the once you've bought one of these, you see, if you watch it back and go, ah, oh, that's the colour. There are so many possibilities. And do, do, do go on my website, which is susanbriscoe.com. Dot com. There's also dot co dot uk, but it's just my name and mm. stick dot com after it or dot co dot uk. You'll go onto my website, and there you'll see the link to the blog, and that's where I'm doing all the stuff to do with the Sashko sampler quilts. Right. I thought I'll put them on the blog, then everybody can ac access it from there. Even the people who don't do, um, oh, I've got the wrong way around. The, the people who do not. So these do are the small Facebook. patterns from the panels. Yeah, because what I'm doing for the, the sampler idea. I'm, Sorry about this, by the way. I printed out some of the sampler diagrams, which are on the blog. Um, I printed some of those out, and I promptly left them in my workroom. I was going to bring those to show you how it's all going to look. Um, because outside of this, we're going to have the larger blocks. I'll just throw a few in. Yeah. This isn't quite where they're going to go, but it, I'll put a few in just to give you a bit of an idea. So you use a fabric that you love in the centre. Yes, that's what I've used for the middle. A fabric that I love. There's going to be some more sashing linking these together just trying to find another crest design that i can put there that's on the black so how many panels do you need to make two this? you would need two two you okay need two. and could you use a geo and a camel yes i'm doing that on one of oh, them oh okay <laughs> you can combine mm. them however you want mm. i i thought it would be lovely to have one where i just did all the camel crests and put them together so there will actually end up being a row of five crests along the top because the cornerstones at the top will also be the crest. And how much the um, of this fabric would you, of the, um, what's it called, this striped fabric? Right, well I would actually go for a two metre piece. Why? Because my outer border is going to have the same fabric as the centre fabric as the cornerstones. Right. And it's going to have a long strip of the stripe down each border for this one. Okay. So if you've got two metres, you will have ample. Um, and when you cut out your um, your borders, you do need to cut your border strips first and then cut your sashing strips in the middle from what is left. Always cut your big bits first and your little bits after. Okay. 
Um, so because of the stripes and getting where to go the yeah, right way. Yeah, because you you'll find you'll get you'll get your four border strips, the big strips to go around the outside. You'll get those, and then there'll be like three repeats of the stripe over on one side of the fabric. Mm. Because they're only, they're only going to be nine inch strips. I was going to go through all of the measurements on the show, and I thought that's just going to be insane. <laughs> so I will put them on the blog instead. Yeah, all right? okay, that, no, that's uh, a really It's going to be a idea. lot easier for you. It's just a really lovely long term project as well, isn't it? Because you could just do one block and build up, and you could yeah. say, right, yeah. let me choose the easiest one. And yeah. Build from there. Well, what what I did with them when I was stitching my blocks, I was thinking a lot about, you know, where I would have one colour and where I'd have another. I think. Um, I'm trying to remember it now. I think I was going to put the crane at the top and the water down at the bottom because I felt the two kind of balanced each other out. They both yeah. had a lot of cream on them. And the ones where I've got a lot of the pinky colour, I was, I was going to have those sort of, um, you know, mm. either diagonally opposite. I think of a lot of sort of mirror imaging. If you look at the piece that I've got just down in front of me now, if we have an overhead on that, that's fantastic. Um, what I've done here, I've put um, spring, summer, autumn, winter. So I've had them sort of going around like that. Then I put the four um, Hitomezashi little mini blocks out of that. So th these are all off, um, you know, the the Kamon, not the Kamon, sorry, the kanji characters for the seasons mm. and these little Hitomezashi ones, they're off the 2020 Kamon panel, they're off the new one. So and you've used so put um, those a there. Japanese fabric in the centre. Actually, no, it's not. It's oh. it's, <laughs> it's um it's one of the Philip Jacobs ones from the um he he designs a snow leopard designs. Oh, okay. He's part of the K Facet Collective. Right. And he does some amazing designs based on Chinese and Japanese designs. And when this was this was coming out, I absolutely had my heart set on this. Um and then it got a little bit difficult to get hold of wholesale. I've got a tiny bit for sale on my website, but I think um, they're actually going to be reprinting it and we are hoping to get it on here, I think, on another show. When I will come back and I promise this, right. will, this okay. will be finished, <laughs> or at least the be. top will be finished the next time round. Um, the, the other Camon crests around here, you see, these were all taken from the 2019 panel. And I thought, well, I'll balance them out a little bit and see how they look. So this one down here, which is the, um, it's the orange blossom, Tachibana, and this one up here, which is the bamboo and the snowflake, they're actually stitched in the same coloured thread. And I just thought they looked sort of nice there and there. I, I tried laying it all out on the bed. I do this all the time. I mm. put on a fairly neutral duvet cover. <laughs> and then I lay all the bits out on the bed and have a look and see how they look. And I take a photograph of it. And it often isn't until you've seen the photo that you think, I've got those blocks in completely the wrong place. Because I was going to put my seasons in the corners. And then because I've used the, um, the sort of pinky red and the, uh, there's a, a shaded thread here which goes purple and blues and we've got mm. that in the, the bright pack. Because I'd used those for these blocks, the minute I looked at it in, in the photograph, I thought, oh, no, 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 they don't look right in the middles here because I had so those up there. So what you'd say is um, so I moved them to lay here. them out and take a photo. Yes, and then lay, that's lay your blocks out, take a photo, start swapping them around until you're happy with where things yeah. are. And because I was using a really old version of this 2019 panel, okay. I, I pointed out to you earlier on, I don't think the camera's even probably picking it up, but the, the pieces that came from the new panels are a slightly blacker black. And that's because I, I was using an old panel I'd had, which was actually one of the first ones I was sent as right. a sample when we did the 2019s. You can't really know. You. I mean, but it is very subtle it's, even it's in It's very, very tiny. In reality. But I thought, what I will do, I will alternate those two blocks. Mm. And then it gave me the idea of, hmm, you could actually do this with two different colourways, couldn't you? You could maybe have, um, you know, the green and the, the grey. Or you could have the green and the light blue, or you could have the blue and the, yeah, the so gosh, black. So, many, so you're going to put all the details of this. We've got we've yes. only got a minute left. Well, the really thing I, the thing I want to tell you now is okay. don't don't do what I did with this. As you're probably looking at it and thinking that's got a bit of a wobble to it. Well, I actually was actually putting the outer parts of this together at my mum's house on my sort of number two sewing machine yesterday, um, mm. and I'd forgot to pack the quarter inch foot. And it does have a feature on the machine where you can move the needle across, yeah. which I did. And I thought I got, got it on a quarter inch setting and I hadn't. And it's actually taken a little bit more than a quarter inch in places. So the outside's looking a bit ripply and it shouldn't. So I'm going to have to take the outer oh, borders off and redo really them. Oh. Um, it is a bit annoying. 
I noticed that we've got my 350 quilting tips, techniques and trade secrets. And one of the things that I put in that book yeah. is if you haven't got a quarter inch foot on your machine, you have to do this trick of adjusting the needle position over to one side. And for goodness sake, do measure it before you start stitching. You know, and do a little test piece with it and make sure you've got okay. it right. And with this, I, I was just trying to get it done so quickly so that we could get on our way down here yesterday. Because I stayed at my mum's at Stockton on Tees on the way down. Um, and I was really trying to get it done. And I didn't bother. And I hadn't quite got it in the right position on that machine. So it's, it's an old machine. Well, when you by the come way. on next, hopefully, it'll I will be have finished. got that sorted. And, and I will have got the top can, done. Um, we can talk through that. And we can. We can. I mean, all the basics of how to put quilting together, by the way, is in that book. Brilliant. Well, thank That's you we so much, on. Susan. It's been fantastic it's having been, you on. I've learned loads. It's been great. I loved it. It's been brilliant. But you'll be back with us hopefully in November. I will. And I, I just love this new studio. It's, it's just, great. It's, isn't it? it's wonderful. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks. It's great. It's been I'll be back again. Brilliant. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on air. And we'll see you soon. <laughs> OK. Bye for now. So I just want to go through the stripe fabric again, because as Susan says, when she comes back, she's going to have finished um, her sampler quilt with all the extra pieces. So we'll just recap through the fabric, because if you, she's going to put the details of on, on that. And if you buy, like she said, two of the panels and do choose two different colourways, they don't have to be the same. This is ideal to go through with it. So this fabric is available in one, two, three, four, five different colourways. So the one that Susan used was this. Was it this one? This one. Yes. This is the one that Susan used. Um, the code on that one is NZ9959. And that's like your sort of berry colours. Mm. Fallen fruits. <laughs> yeah, it's just not got a name. It's 2720E. Um, oh, it's called Aubergine Grey on the website. But that's that colour there. Um, right, then we've got the next one, which is the sort of aubergine and a burnt orange, is ZU9978. I'll show you that one. This is your normal, um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's your normal 44 inch width quilting fabric. And like Susan said, it has got a little bit of weight to it. It's perfect, you know, you can use it for piecing. She said she's used it for piecing, but it does have a little bit more weight and um, substance to it. So it's very good for bag making and quilt making as well. Um, the next one, which is a, a mustard and a charcoal grey stripe. The code on that is um, ID9932. So I should show you that one or that way if you're going. So remember the stripes run vertically down the fabric. So depending on how you want to buy it, they don't go hold, they run vertically down the selvage. So I'm holding it with the selvage running vertically and that's the way they go. I mean, that's the way no stripes normally go on fabric, to be honest, but just in case you, you need to check that. Um, the next one is YR9982. And this has got a, like a deep olive green and a marine blue with must, um, stripes with the mustard colored narrow stripes. I'll show you that one. It's just a beautiful fabric. Do you know, I mean, I would use this for dressmaking as well, make a lovely skirt. Make a really nice dress if you had this for the skirt bit and then a plain for the top. Because it's very, um, it's very autumnal really. All the colours are very sort of deep and muted. They're not, they're not your sort of bright springy poppy colours. They have got a really nice muted feel to them, but it, because of the way, because it's woven, you know, it's not printed and you've got um, the black thread that goes one way and then different colour threads that go the other way. It looks like a really, a real quality fabric. So the next one is NO9923 and, you know, like Susan said, it's ideal for teaming with your shashko, but also, you know, use it for bag making or furnishings. It's got a lovely stripe, a bit picnicky could be, couldn't it? Outdoor cushions, maybe not this time of year. And we haven't had these on air before. This is the first time that we've um, brought them on, on air to Sewing Street before. So do get them whilst we have them. Because we have, um, we have sold them before on Sewing Court.
cetera. And they were very, very popular. So it was one of the things that we did talk to Susan about bringing back here. Well, can you believe? How have we got that? Four hours. The end of the day, I've only got three minutes left. Where's that gone? And tomorrow. Wish I was here tomorrow. Tomorrow's Christmas. Little Jim drum roll. Um, five, not only, not only is it Christmas tomorrow, we've got five hours. So at eight o'clock, Christmas fabrics and kits. Because we need, we need to start stitching. If you haven't started, you need to crack on with it. We need the Christmas fabrics. Nine o'clock, we've got Alison Marion coming in and she's going to be showing her, her Christmas crackers and table runner. So if you haven't got any of your own inspiration, then you know, watch Alison's show. Last time she was on with these, it sold out. So I would say, once, once we get it at eight o'clock and the show opens, get it in your basket. I always think if you get it in your basket, check it out. You can just sit and watch the show, much nicer. 10 o'clock, Christmas fabrics with the Warm Wishes panel. Oh, that's interesting. I'd like to see that. Um, 11 o'clock, Christmas tree skirt with Alison Marion. Yeah, I love a Christmas tree skirt because the bottom of the, it always looks a bit rubbish, doesn't it, your Christmas tree? And I think it's nice. You put a nice Christmas tree skirt and you put your presents on it. And then at 12 o'clock, extra hour, we have got um, FPP, foundation paper piecing. Oh, I love foundation paper piecing. Used to really hate it. Then I worked out how to do it. Um, that's the Nutcracker and Mouse Cushion with Victoria Pete. Now, I've been following these on her Instagram site. So she sent in a video of this because Victoria Pete's living in Gibraltar now. So she hasn't, she hasn't come over, but she sent a video. She's been developing these um, designs for quite a few a while now because I've been following her and I saw she popped on yesterday that the mouse cushion was coming. They're really lovely. Anyway, so she's not actually live on air, but she has sent a video in, which is great because Victoria Pete was one of our all-time favourites. And... Um, if you've not tried FPP before, but you'd like to give it a go, she's a brilliant teacher and you'll become as hooked as I did. So thanks for shopping with us for today. Don't forget to check out your baskets and I hope you've enjoyed Shashko. And we've learned so much today with her, haven't we? It's just been brilliant. Um, I would have a look at Susan's blog because I think there's a, you know, there's a lot more information. You can really follow what she does and you can see how she gets along with her sampler quilt as well. Um, but give it a go or just have a go on your jeans. I'm going to do that. But I think, you know, you need the Sashko source book. That's the one to get, I think. And then if you can buy that with a panel, perfect. But thanks so much. And um, what can I say tomorrow? Happy Christmas for tomorrow. I think you'll have a great day. Bye bye.